Well, we are back, huh? We're back at the Nine Club, everybody. Let me tell you something, huh? Today, today, <laughs> today, <laughs> we have a special, special, special guest, Mr. Nick Dompierre. Thank you guys for having me. <laughs> thanks, thanks for coming, dude. It's great to be here. Hey, it's great to have you here, bro. Thank you. It's been a while. We were just talking before the show. I haven't seen you probably in five or six years, Seriously, at least. Yeah. It's been a while. Audio huh? days. Okay, maybe a little longer than five <laughs> or six years, but you know. Well, no, seriously, we used to have great uh, audio trips and everything. The best, bro. Um, well, my physique has changed a lot. I don't know about you, but you know, I may look, I may not look the same. I you know, you made some improvements. Thank you, bro. Yeah, appreciate <laughs> that. Appreciate that. You know? <laughs> How's it? Shane up bar in his room. Yeah, I could do four now. Yeah. That's good. Wow, four, four? It's better than three. It's You're better. Thank you. <laughs> Better than three, you know. Let me tell you something. Bre should let's just talk about working out, huh? Okay. Fuck the skating. Let's just go right into working out. And that's huh? what, kind of what my life's about. Is it? Okay. Pretty much. Well, <laughs> I mean, I still skate. Like but. sure. I found now the chin ups. No pull ups, chin ups. There's different kinds, right? Mm. There's the ones where your 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 palms are facing you outwards, and then there's the ones to the side, mm. right? Yeah. Now the ones like this with the palm with your that's fingers, a chin up, yeah. that's a chin up. Very easy. When it's easier, yeah, it's yeah. easier yeah. when your hands are like this. It's harder. Absolutely. Why is that? <laughs> um, it's just the, the grip pos positioning because when you have your palms facing you, you're uh -huh. able to use your bicep as well. But this way, it's straight all lats, so it's a lot harder. And my lat is located where? Right here. Oh, underneath the Basically armpit. your back. It's part of your, part of your so back. So if I'm like this and I'm pulling, yeah, I can see that. Then this one, oh, I'm using my bi biceps. Biceps are involved. Okay. So they help. Oh. So actually, my biceps, I, they're pretty, pretty, strong. pretty good. <laughs> wow, I've always Chris. wondered that, you know? <laughs> and then sideways, what's... Neutral. So this is neutral. Neutral. So yeah, oh, so that must the be the best of both worlds. That must be the easiest one then. <laughs> that positioning for me is the easiest just because I have bad wrists oh, from years of skateboarding, slamming gotcha. on them. Okay. So the neutral grip is like where I feel most comfortable. Yeah. Okay. How many chin up how many chin ups can you do? Uh chin ups, maybe I mean I did pull ups the other day. I did a okay. pull up challenge with my girlfriend. How many pull ups? <laughs> how many pull ups? I did, it was like thirteen and a half. Thirteen or was okay. it fourteen? It was like 14. At least uh, that yeah. doesn't make me feel. They're hard. They're hard. They're hard yeah. I mean, four compared to, and then you could do 13. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm pretty good. I'm in good shape. Yeah. I figured it's never be higher. I know. I thought you were going to say like 40. Well, I weigh like 210 pounds. Jesus so. Christ. Bro. <laughs> I'm like, I'm pulling up more weight. You're like two of yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Well, we'll get into the body, uh, all that workout cool. stuff. Yeah, yeah. Bodybuilding or working out? What do you, per, what, what? Both. Strength training, bodybuilding. Strength training. Yeah. I like that better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Strength training. Yeah. Uh, we will get into all that because listen, man, we've had, we've all had a, a rich history together. You, yeah. me, Raj, Kelly, not, not so, so much, much Kelly. What? I think I used to skate with him. You yeah, were on no that. audio tours, bro. <laughs> I definitely was on, definitely not on those. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you, uh, originally from Boston, mm -hmm. Massachusetts, New Bedford, Bedford Mass, yeah. New Bedford, right now, Raj, where did you grow up? I pretty much grew up in Cambridge and then moved to the North shore. Cambridge and the North, I don't know what that, how, in relation to where Nick grew up? North Shore, it's basically the North. Did you guys skate together at all? I mean, you're a little older, Raj, but. I saw him uh, when he was a child at Skater Island with a little scum stash. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you know who Raj? I didn't, no, no, no. No, you didn't know Raj? No, he always had a camera though, so like. Okay. He was always filming people. Yeah. Absolutely. Were you rocking the beanie back then? I feel like all the old footage of you or when you were a kid, you always had a beanie. Yeah, I was always, I think it was like. Maybe when I turned like around like 17 is when I started rocking the beanie because I always had like long hair and then like as it got like super long that's when I started like tucking it in my hat. And oh then, yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, it was, like, the, the old thrasher beanie. Yeah. The lady lasso. Yeah, yeah. Was just sitting beanie the, the whole main. time. Yeah, yeah. So I would like it was just like it was like almost down to my butt. So then I would just like fold it up, tuck it in my hair, and then like gray i remember that gray beard. yeah did you wash it remember nah. you used to have like a shoestring <laughs> inside of it too shoestring yeah i would weave like a, a shoelace inside so i could actually tie it as tight as i needed to so that way it wouldn't fall off i mean sometimes it would fall off if i slammed pretty hard but like really it would usually like keep everything i didn't even notice there, yeah. that you had a whole technique 
<laughs> Should have marketed it back then. <laughs> Could have, dude. And, no, uh, no. I still can. No one's yeah, done it. No one's really done that. <laughs> Do you ever skate with just the hair? I don't. I never remember you skating just with the hair. Yeah, it was just pretty tough Being, to try yeah, to skate yeah. with. You know, you put your head down, the hair goes in front of your eyes, right. and you can't see. So the beanie just kind of kept everything back. So I feel I like the hair came out when you, when you became like delirious. Yeah, yeah. If I was like partying, like it'd be like <laughs> party mode. <laughs> Come out. Rockstar. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, like you didn't, you didn't want to cut it or anything. Like you just felt. Yeah, I just wanted to keep it going. You yeah. know, it's almost like I was growing and I well, I made it this long. Might yeah. as well just keep going. Okay. You know, so it was just like whatever. I'm just gonna keep rocking it. Sure. Yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> and then what? Uh, what, what was the skate park over there, Raj? That uh, it was kind of in the in the cuts that Eli skated and Maximus. Yeah. He never got there. Was it still there when he when? No, I think it was done. Okay. But Skater Island was like the spot to go. Oh, to was then. it? That oh, was yeah. a spot. Yeah. 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 So that's where you grew up skating, learning to, learning how to skate, pretty much. Uh, well, I grew up skating like the Fairhaven Skate Park. It's called Livesey. It was like the little skate park that opened up, mm. and that's where skateboarding started for me. You know oh. that situate concrete stuff? Yeah. yeah. Terrible garbage. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dirt, um, but I mean, that's like where I learned stuff. Oh, prefab, yeah, oh, all prefab. Oh, was, shit. But I mean, it was cool for me because sure. it was all brand new, mm -hmm. you know. But then, like the first time I went to Skater Island, I was like, "Whoa, this is like a skate park. This is like you know, how it like, should be, real deal." Yeah, right, right. Dude, the park was amazing. Mm -hmm. Was it? Fuck yeah. Yeah, they had everything. Yeah, and they were planning on expanding it too. Mm -hmm. So when you found the new skate park, I mean, were you? like learning shit were you actually getting better you know i skated every single day yeah, you know, yeah. like that's all i lived and breathed and that's all i wanted to do you right know, i'd be in school like waiting to like get out of school and you know i'd be doing all my homework in school so that way i'd have no homework and then i can just go to the, the park all day till okay. it got dark and then yeah i just really really loved it and just wanted to progress i was getting better and you know learning different tricks and you know, I remember like the last time the, I remember the first time that I landed like on a kickflip and then like kind of shot out and I was like, yeah, I almost got it, you know, <laughs> yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah. and then like you just keep trying and trying and then you finally land on it in like a standing still position. You're just like looking around to see if somebody <laughs> saw it. You're just like, sure. I just did it, you know, and then best feeling it just like, you know, the progression just kind of took off the more and more I skated. You right. Know? When did you realize you could ollie like super high? Uh, that was a while. <laughs> that was a while? Okay. Yeah. This fucking yeah. guy would ollie, yeah. oh my Everything. God, bro. Yeah. It's crazy. 49s. 49 millimeters. Yeah. You rode 49s? Oh. With thunder lows, yeah. <laughs> what? It just gives you a faster snap. You know? Yeah. It's like See, that's what I heard, but I feel like if the board has more trajectory, if it like has more, more leverage. Of a leverage, you could... Get so higher. Weird. It depends how quick you snap it. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah, it's all about timing. Too. Well, Westgate was saying the same thing because he was riding venture lows with like fifties, yeah. right? And like, dude, that seems so quick to snap <laughs> so high. God, I remember being on like audio tours. What was it? We were at one spot, Rod. It was at night, and it was this like handicap ramp over a bar over bushes. I think you one eighty did or yeah, something. Yeah. Where yeah. was that? Is that Miami? Oh, maybe. maybe maybe Miami. I think because Ian O'Connor was shooting it. That's yeah, right. maybe Ian. Yeah. yeah, it was like white and like was lit up at night. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yep, yeah. yeah. I think that was Miami. Did you guys ever skate the same spots? Of course, all the time. It's hard to it's hard to imagine. No, this Kelly, I, I was watching. That time. <laughs> I was watching. Chris would be the dude like just rolling up the stairs like. That's one. <laughs> yeah. then, I'd go just, give him a pound yeah. once in a while, <laughs> like and, and encourage him, you know. <laughs> But um, yeah, I mean, dude, I just listen watching you skate in real life. It, 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 like it's super impressive, dude. Uh, thanks, you know, man. I mean, in downtown, alling up the thing that everybody was going down, you had a little loading dock onto the sidewalk. No, no, you kick flipped into the street. Oh yeah, yeah, the thing near the barracks. What were you thinking, dude? When you were you just like, I'm gonna. You kick flipped it, right? Or did yeah, you all yeah. Eat? No, yeah. kick flipped it. That was massive. Um, was that? I mean, it just that type of stuff was easier for me. You know, like everybody's like can get super tech and like nolly backside heel flip over the bar or sure. switch tray flip. I'm like, I can't do that. You know, right, like I'm right. just gonna go faster and go into the street. <laughs> like that's like the way I skated and that type of stuff was like what I like to do and it was like easier for me to do. Right. You know? And plus, I mean, that's a busy street. Yeah, yeah. Dude, like I could imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Santa Fe? Yeah. yeah. I could imagine just being so frustrated with the uh, amount of attempts you get 
in that certain period of time, yeah. you know? Yeah. Sure. Well, I mean, like I did it in like a, a couple of tries, so it was like, oh yeah, well, yeah, it kind of like worked out well. I was like, all right, cool, <laughs> let's cool. get out of here. Yeah. Were most of your tricks like that? Like all the gnarly ones that you did, were they like most, pretty quick? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, there was some that obviously you had to battle for, but um, yeah, there was some that were just like, all right, cool, like all right, let's get out of here, next spot or yeah. whatever. Sometimes it just worked because that's all I did was skate, you know. So mm-hmm. it's like I had the tricks down. That's what I practiced, and it just go to spots and get to work and make it happen. And you and Roger filmed a lot. We yeah. filmed a ton, yeah. 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 Those trips to Philly, those trips were so fun, man. You stayed at Bam's house? Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, that was super fun. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what was it Data Recovery that you released? Oh, yeah. We had all that footage. It oh, on, yeah. It's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, Data, like, a lot yeah. of that stuff was, like... We did that Mag Minute, too. Yeah. Oh, the Mag Minute, too, yeah. yeah. So, growing up in, in uh, Massachusetts, and then what had you... Your first sponsor was Fiverr, right? Fiverr, yeah. How did that even happen? Well, it happened basically because, you know, Anthony Shetler. Okay. Like, he was, like, the sponsor kid in the area, so he already had sponsors, and I was, like, that little kid skating at the skate park and stuff. And so right. then I started skating with those guys, and I was going with Shetler, like, every weekend to New York City to oh, okay. skate with, like, Fiber or do demos and stuff. Did you skate with Emmett back then? Emmett, too, yeah. yeah. Emmett, Emmett was skating. Um, yeah, that whole crew. Like, but back then, it was, like, the OG Fiber squad when mm-hmm. Shetler was on, so it was, like, Pencil... Um, Dude, Dan Pencil's amazing. Yeah, mm. Dan Pencil, um, Andy Pitts, Pat. Uh, who else was there? Pat Gadotti. Mm. Um, who's the other guy? Yeah, it was just like the OG team. It was super dope, and uh, I would go up there every single weekend skating with all those guys. Otto, Feliciano, that whole crew. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. So I was skating with them, and then you were on before Brandon was, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was Brandon on Brandon Westgate. Yeah. 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 So we would go up to New York, skate with them all the time and you know, Steve I was seeing me progress, getting better, you know, skating the demos and you know, it felt good to be skating with everybody, you know, and actually skating a demo. Right. So that felt really cool and then, you know, as I progressed and got better, you know, Steve is like, Hey, you would you think Nick would want some boards? And I was like, Oh hell yeah, definitely, you know. So then I started getting like flow from Fibro and like started traveling more with them. Like I went to Europe and stuff and it was really sick, man. It oh, was, even on Flow, they took you to uh, Europe. Flow Trash, yeah. Flow Trash. <laughs> yeah. The, 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 yeah, what was up with the, this nickname, Flow Trash? I guess that's, I mean, I don't know. They just used to like pick on me and beat me up and like <laughs> make me sleep on the floor and shit. And they just called me like <laughs> trash. Flow Trash, you know, like that's where it like all started. And but was it like a fun, were they just having fun with you or were they really, I mean, because that's a kind of a nasty, I mean, were you, did yeah, Were you bummed kinda, on that? Or you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Flow trash. Yeah. I'd be like, what? Dude? Yeah, like, I mean, I'm, it was fun for them. For me, it was sure. like, yeah, it's kind of cool. But at the same time, it's like, damn this <laughs> like, <laughs> right i, I yeah. kind of know what, what, what he was going through you know oh yeah, yeah. what yeah. were you what was just, your nickname just like being in the corner all the time and like having to press the button all these things <laughs> i kind of know listen, listen, button yeah, trash. Yeah. yeah button trash right. yeah. <laughs> nick if it was up to me he'd be in a whole different fucking <laughs> room you see what i'm saying <laughs> yeah he'd yeah, be another he'd be we, down we can the, make that happen yeah he'd be down the street yeah. Button trash, jeez. <laughs> yeah, so it kind of bummed you out, but at the same time, all good, all good and fun, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. Where, where in Europe did you go for the first? Was that the first time out of the country? Yeah, we went to oh. England and Ireland. So oh. it was like Dublin, Manchester, UK. So okay. it was like a really, really fun trip. I think I was like, I was fourteen on that trip. Fourteen. Yeah. So like, I think I turned fifteen on that trip, which was pretty wow, crazy. Oh, yeah. that's Did, sick. Did yeah. Steve ever have to like, get a note from your mom? <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, they actually snuck me into a bar room because like, they were all like, we're going out partying and yeah. drinking like, at nighttime. This was in, I think it was like Dublin, Ireland. So okay. um, I was like staying at home at the house because obviously I was super young and then someone talked to somebody and they're like, oh, just you know, tell him to come. He can come in there. And then like, Dan Pencil was giving me like shots of Jack Daniels and stuff. Did you even drink at the yeah, time? I Are mean, you? well, I didn't, dr- I did then, okay. you know, <laughs> but I was just like, oh man, I'll, everybody's doing it. So whatever, right. you know, like I pretty much had no choice. Dublin's a weird place to go, right? You don't really hear about tours going through Dublin. Not really. No. Yeah. It's very strange. It's a sick city. Is it? Yeah. I've never been there. So you get back from this floor, um, Europe trip. Now, are you going to get on? Is there talks about like, hey, let's put them on the team. Let's let's do this. Yeah, I think it was around like when I was like, yeah, 15, 16 is when uh, when I, I turned am for them. Okay. 
And then uh, I wrote for them for a while, and then we sent out a tape to like get stuff from like Spitfire and Thunder, like a sponsor me tape. Oh. So then um, I was talking to Spitfire and Thunder, this guy named Matt Newton. Okay. And as we were talking, you know, he's like, oh, you know, would you want to get boards from Real? And I'm like, oh, I'm like, I, I ride for Fibro. You know, like I'm really stoked on them. I love it. And right. he's like, all right, yeah, cool. You know, and so then I talked to like Shetler about it, like later on and stuff. And he's like, you know, it'd be a really good move for you you know to like be in the industry of skateboarding since yeah. you know like fiber is like really underground but you know i love the whole crew Dude, and small you know, grassroots yeah, yeah you know it's, and it's like local for you too yeah, well, reels right all the way there. out here on the west coast yeah yeah so then like you know months went by and then i was like all right you know i'm gonna get on uh flow for real so then i was on flow for real for a while and then uh you know i just kind of put my work in went on trips and you know just every spot i skated every spot tried to get clips and just kind of worked my way up and then right. turned M and, you know, started skating all these other contests and stuff and was traveling a lot more. So going to like California and stuff. So it was really, really cool. And yeah, how, so that's, how was the conversation with uh five borough? Uh, it was hard. Was it? You know, well, it was like, basically, well, you, you are 16, right? Yeah, Something I was like, like that, like little kid, you know? So, well, I, actually what I did, I sent Steve an email. <laughs> you <laughs> oh, sent him an email. Yeah, like I didn't know what to do, you know, like, cause I talked to Shetler about it and yeah. I'm like, you know, what should I do? And then, you know, I sent them like an email and, you know, thank you so much. And, um, you know, real wants to send me boards and, you know, Shetler said it'd be like really good for me and, you know, to be in the industry. And, you know, I just want to say thank you so much. And, um, did he email so, you back? Yeah. He was like pretty bummed about it. Okay. And, you know, which, I mean, it happens when people, anybody quits a team or sure, something, you yeah, know, for sure. But for sure, for, for me too, it, it bummed me out too for, to have to leave, you know, that whole crew and the yeah. whole squad to be with a whole nother team that I don't even really know. You don't even know, right? You know, so like from there, I was like, all right, you know, this is what it is. It's skateboarding, you know, to make it to the next level and, you know, to travel more and like to be a pro skater, you know, that's what I always like dreamed of as a kid. Yeah. You know, so I was like, all right, I'm just going to go for it. Go and, for it. Yeah. I mean, real... Can't go wrong with that. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Wait, yeah, so was it was it a rep that sent sent your footage to real or, or to or? Well, he to, was trying to get on Spitfire and Thunder and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, I used to film with this guy Bob Costa. You know Bob? Yeah, Bob's awesome. Yeah. So uh, we made like sponsor me tapes, sent it out to Spitfire and Thunder because I think Shetler was getting flow from them as well a mm. while back, and so we just sent out a tape, and then this guy Matt Newton replied back to me and was just talking to me and he's like, oh yeah, we'd like, we'd love to give you real boards. And I was like, oh, I can't really do that. I don't want to do that, you know? But then eventually, you know. I mean, it's pretty rad of Shetler to say, you know, hey, this could be a good opportunity. Yeah. yeah. You know, some other people may just be like, oh, stick it out. You're with us. For sure, bro, yeah. You know? Yeah, I was just a little kid. I didn't know anything. Sure. You know, I was just like, 15 or 16 But you knew years real old. though. You knew the whole. Oh yeah, for sure. Like, yeah. I see him in like skate magazines and skate videos and right. all that stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah, I was definitely, I felt honored to be part of the team. Well, well to be Flow Trash for them. For flow Trash. Yeah. You're like, maybe I can ditch this nickname. Now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to ride it out for a little while. Mm -hmm. But how was it now actually going to the, to California and meeting all these guys? And did you meet Jim Thebow at the time too? Or Yeah, I met Jim, met Mickey. Okay. Um, Jason Ferris was the guy who was kind of like being the team manager, like mm -hmm. driving the van, driving us to all the different demos and all that. Um, but yeah, like I, I actually went out to California. This is like after I graduated high school because, you know, what, what was limiting me from traveling so much, like to basically be on the road all the time was just high school. school yeah. You know, my mother wouldn't let me quit because I was like on one trip and I was like, oh, I want to stay, but I had to come back after the weekend. And yeah, I was yeah. just like, this is bullshit. Like, oh, this is whack. I want to just skate. And you know, yeah. I just toughed I, it out, graduated. I kind of feel like skate companies shouldn't sponsor anyone until like, they're over 16 and <laughs> graduated high school. Seriously, yeah. yeah. There's yeah. no retirement plan for skateboarding. Yeah. Every, everybody remember that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know. Yeah. But, but that's the time when everything's happening. Yeah. You know, you're getting good. Yeah, you don't it's think like, about your future yeah. at no. all. But those like, companies, like, don't ruin their fucking kid's career, like, whole mm -hmm. life by having them drop out of school. No, but I mean, Raj, how many people have sit in this chair and say I, that I they... I know, I know. You know? I know. I, I graduated. Yeah. Right. Look where I am now. <laughs> <Huh>? <laughs> mm. So you couldn't drop out. It wasn't yeah. an option. No, so I just figured, all right, I'm Tuffed here. Out. I'm going to just grind, get it done. And I got, like, really good grades in school because I was oh, just yeah. like, all right, let's just... Let's do this. I'm here. I can't oh. do anything else. If what was I your get... favorite subject? Math was pretty dope. I like yeah. Math. yeah. 
Math was dope. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I've never heard that before. I feel like yeah. you like technical shit, though. Yeah, yeah, like I definitely from, like, like technical. Work on cars and work on your body. Yeah. Mm. So I did go to a, a vocational school. So basically, half the time you're in like shop, which I took carpentry for. Okay. And so the other half would be like academics. So gotcha. it's kind of like it made it like a little bit easier. So it wasn't just so heavy on the books all the time. Right. But then you can get like creative in carpentry, you know. And I was Built like, oh, I'm shit. gonna build skate ramps you know that's why i want to take carpentry oh so uh that's what i took in high school which was uh pretty cool yeah sick so you had to kind of go the, the tours and stuff you had to if you, you had to work it around school yeah much. but my teachers were super cool with it because they were happy for me but at the same time i was getting good grades so like it was cool you know oh yeah it all worked out yeah, yeah. so uh, do your homework guys <laughs> yeah so you get a little pass maybe if like hey this tour overlaps school yeah the teachers would be like hey just go you know, yeah you know. yeah it was cool so you come to california you meet all these guys how long were you on flow for real for maybe like a year or something a year okay so i skated like it's the tampa bad. contest traveled around went on all these trips and tours and then I was shooting with like Gabe Morford, so I was getting Dope. photos, and then they started running photos in the mags, and then you know they're just stacking all these clips and all this footage, and then it was basically they saw the work I was putting in, and right. then en ended up like graduating to Grad yeah. amateur, yeah. which was pretty cool. Yeah, right. Yeah. When was the first time you met Ernie Torres? First time I met Ernie was, I think it was on the. Actually, no, we were both flow before. We oh, were you were? Him. Yeah, so we were, we were just on like some trips and stuff. But yeah, the first time I met Ernie, man, he was so tiny, bro. Was he? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's still, still, like, he's still small, but like, like he was like little Ernie. <laughs> you know, like we were both like 17 or something. Yeah. So like we were just like these little hungry flow trash kids, like totally skating, trying to get tricks, skating these rails and stuff. But yeah, I forget which city it was in that we met, but it was on like some flow trips some and stuff. Guy. And like even like Bobby Warst was on flow for crooked at that time oh, yeah. so we were like the the three little flow trash kids gotcha. that were going on just like trips and stuff so that was really dope yeah, yeah. who got on real first though was ernie it you did. ernie, ernie, ernie. Yeah. oh that must have been heartbreaking well he was he, he, <laughs> <laughs> he, he had already been on flow longer than i had oh, gotcha. and like he, um he was under like peter raymond Dedda's wing so mm -hmm. those are like two homies like, yeah 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 they were both living in um well, i know peter was from oklahoma but mm -hmm. I forget where they were both living at the same time, but like Ernie's like Kansas City. Yeah, like yeah. Kansas? But like Ernie and Pete were just like homies, yeah, you know. Yeah. So like they were always skating together. Ernie was on more trips than I was sure. because of like school and like being home and stuff. Okay. But um, yeah, eventually I made my way. You up made there. your way up. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ernie's a great dude. We're not trying. To, oh, absolutely. He's, yeah, he's, yeah. He's What's the up, big Ernie? If you're best. watching. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then so you got on. I mean, flow for a year is not bad. It's pretty that's, quick. That's that's great, pretty yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it's pretty, um, bro. I mean, well, dude, people how, are on flow put, for a long time. You put the work in. You put the work in. You can get on. How are those trips when you came out to California? Because I would always hear stories about like the flow kids on real, like like Mickey, shit. <laughs> oh, dude, Mickey Ray's would yeah. like take you guys to like yeah. the gnarliest spots. Yeah, what was that like? Yeah, it was pretty crazy. We we went to like deluxe and stuff, and like we're talking to like Jim and Mickey, seeing like the whole like deluxe distribution. They have all like the product everywhere. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. And then like. We're all talking, and Mickey's like, I think Mickey was talking to like Jim or something. He's like, yeah, I think I'm gonna take him to like Hunter's Point. And he's like, oh, should I bring the gun? Like, I was just like, what? <laughs> yeah, what? yeah, so like, wow. like the Hunter, Hunter's Point rails, like, I guess they were like Pretty super hard. ghetto area yeah. and stuff. So we ended up like going down there and stuff, and we couldn't skate it that day, but mm. I was just like, wow, this is gnarly. And like, we were just going to all these different spots, and I was just like, bro, like, did they expect me to skate this thing? <laughs> like, and did, you probably did. Yeah, I, I mean, I skated it, but I was just like, it was like the biggest things that I've ever skated. Yeah. Seriously? You know? Yeah, I was just like, like the gnarly rail. It's basically like the hammer spots. You right, know? Like right, SF right. has oh. some like gnarly, like rugged hammer spots that it's like, bro, like, all right. And I was just basically getting my feet wet and skating like gnarlier stuff. Sure. You know? Like, yeah. I was like skating like some pretty gnarly stuff, but like it wasn't like, like 18 stair rails you know i was skating like some like 12 stair rails and sure. like get the basics down and stuff but then it was like almost like you were kind of forced to learn and like forced to be forced to man up and like just go for stuff because you wanted to put on a good showing for you them too the you want to get on the team sure, and all this yeah. stuff so it was uh, motivating too probably. absolutely yeah. yeah and then to be skating with like peter and dennis and sure. you know Darrell and jt and just seeing all those dudes throw down it's like bro like that's what 
they do. That's why sure. they're pro. And it's like, yeah. that's where I'm trying to go. Was you Tremblay know? on the team then? Chris Tremblay was on, like, I was on flow at that point. Right. So he was already on the team. Dude, JT Alts oh, yeah. has done some of the gnarliest tricks I've ever seen in my life. He didn't, have you guys seen the thing in San Diego? The bump to, the bump to, ch- or uh, chain to bank. Yeah, oh, he did, over he nose man. Kickflip nose man. Oh, yeah, yeah. kickflip nose man. That's one that's, of the gnarliest tricks yeah. ever done. That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's that unreal. Psycho. Who was your favorite, though? On the, like, if you wanted to, if you wanted to skate with somebody, like, every day, who who would be like your go-to? It was always Ernie. Ernie, like we would always it. be roomies and stuff, and uh, yeah, we always kicked it a bunch. Okay, yeah, yeah. big Ern, big Ern. Yeah, <laughs> I love Ern. He's such a great. Dude. Yeah, for real, man. Yeah. So you're on real. You're filming. You're videos, photos. Like, when was the point when you turned pro? Because you did some videos for them, right? Didn't you and Ernie share a part in a video? That was later. Was that yeah. later? Yeah, that was, was like, since day one. Yeah, since oh, day one. Since that day was one. like years. Oh, after. was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, like, we filmed the Roll Forever. Roll Forever. That was like oh, yeah, my Roll first Forever. part with Real. Um, so, yeah, I was like, I was really stoked on that part. Gotcha. Like, all the footage that they used, I was super pumped. And they actually used one of my friends. It was like one of my friend's bands. I used one of the songs that I wanted to use too. Dope. And like Felucci was kind of like hating on it. And I'm oh, like, bro, it? this song's dope, you know? Yeah. You don't have to pay for it. Yeah. So like he kind of like left a little message in the beginning of me like calling him saying, oh, it'd be dope if you use the song. Cause yeah. I guess he didn't like it. He didn't like I thought it was dope. All my friends. You? Yeah. You want to put a little disclaimer yeah. out yeah. there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but overall it turned out super cool and I was really hyped on it. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then soon after, did they turn you pro? Yeah. So I turned pro, I think when I was... 19 or 20. Did they surprise you or did they... Because yeah. Jim tends to do s- special things. You know, he doesn't just take it lightly. The you first know? boards were sick. Yeah. They yeah. had like so, the whole iRock theme. Yeah. yeah. So the, the first board graphic, so they obviously know I'm like into like racing and stuff. Mm-hmm. So what they did was they kind of took the Chevrolet sign and that's where it started with like my logo, which was like the N and the D. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. they basically took the Chevrolet sign but kind of put an N and it's made it like almost like a D then they had like flags and it had like the same color theme as like my Camaro my, yeah, my blue Camaro okay. so like when that board came out I was just like I was like blown away I couldn't believe it that it was oh like, they surprised you with that like you yeah. didn't know that was coming yeah and I was just like like how did you guys come up with this like this is like amazing you know and I was just so it's kind like, of a no brainer at the same time though. <laughs> yeah I know but just to see it all together and just yeah. like that they did that for me. I was just yeah. super like thankful and I was like, bro, like, sure. I did it. You know, I mean, they could have just done the real logo with the names and you know what I mean? The they oval. Could have, yeah, the oval. <laughs> like yeah. Right there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. I mean, your first graphic should be special. Mine was a, a beard. Yours was special. Mine was a beard uh, you know, portrait. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I didn't have the beard, but. Wait, so at that time that we turned pro, you, you wrote for DC. Were you on them before or did you get on way later? That was later, yeah. Were you any so shoe sponsor? audio oh. when I turned pro. Oh. So then I had my audio pro shoe, which was okay. kind of based off the Hamilton shoe, which that was like my favorite shoe. Oh, Chris knows about that one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, bro. Dude, Thank Hamilton you. was the goat. It wasn't it great? The best throw. The best. <laughs> which ones did you do skate, man? Which one? I like the one with um the the new bucks, synthetic. The synthetic black it? you you were black shoe guy. Black white laces. Black white yeah. laces, yeah. Gray beanie. Gray gray beanie. <laughs> <laughs> that was my kit. In a fucking Mark uh, Apple Yard Vulcan shirt. Yeah. yeah with man. the Dolan jeans. Yeah. Man, the Hamiltons, man. Yeah. <laughs> Those were great. Because they weren't so, you know. You've had audio's not around anymore. Like, I know. Dude, listen, really profiting from this. Bro. We I would were, still be skating every day if audio was See? Yeah. <laughs> Those checks were nice, huh? <laughs> yeah. Good checks. No, but the audio Hamilton was just, you know, it, it didn't have the big A on it. If it did, it was just really subtle. It was kind of the, they'd use the the tone on tone you know it's a great yeah. shoe it's comfortable too well how did you get on audio i got on audio oh actually ernie ernie hooked it up there you go yeah Ooh. so i was on flow for real at the time and then uh i think i was skating i was just kind of skating whatever uh, i think at the time i was skating like a black pair of andrew reynolds like the red and black ones okay and then um i talked to ernie and i was like hey man like do you think there's any way i could get like some flowed audios or yeah. something because he was getting audio shoes and then he ended up hitting up travis howell and I talked to Travis and he's like, yeah, definitely for sure. What's your address? Sent me out a box and I was like, hell yeah, this is sick. So then I got like a fat box of like audio shoes and from there it just, you know, just kept on going. Totally. Yeah. I mean, audio at the time, I mean, Danny Montoya, Kenny Anderson, Chris Robert. I mean, there's such a great, <laughs> great team. You know, Absolutely. You did. 
pro ad in a hammock on audio. You know? <laughs> but audio, listen, man, we had some great trips. Dude, you I know? miss it. It was really, those were the trips where, I mean, we had an RV. We had, I mean, good hotels. It was my first taste of like. The good life? Pretty good, Raj. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, guitar yeah. hero? <laughs> pretty good. Guitar hero yep. in, the, in the RVs. Those were the best trips. Man. The funnest too. Yeah. Zoomies trips, like the oh, Zoomie signings and stuff. That was crazy. Wait, was Bam was Tony there. Hawk and Bam on these trips too? Dude, it'd be like Tony, Bam, Sean. Ooh, them, yeah. That's gnarly. Yeah. Those are some heavy hitters. Oh. And Krob. Dude, and Krob. I'm telling you. Huh? And, and Nick. And, and Raj. And Toya. <laughs> <laughs> and Slego. So, yeah, and man. Nesser. We did. It, was, <laughs> it really was. Uh, Nesser. Yeah, it was a great, great, great time. Man. So when they gave you your first shoe... Okay, so you get on the team, Ernie gets you on, you get your first shoe. Uh, what'd you say it was based around? The Hamilton. Oh, was it based around the Hamilton? Yeah. Um, you had full design control, like you were in the office designing and stuff? Mm -hmm. Did you design oh. it with Kai or Graham? I think it was Kai. Kai? Yeah. Hmm. When that came out, did you have one shoe? Uh, it was one shoe, but there was different colors. Different ways. colors. One yeah. was like a blue and black, one oh. was red and black. And one was one was all black. I okay. Believe. Yeah. Do you still have them? I don't. Damn. You didn't save did. anything. Are you you don't. What about any year old boards? No, I had. Did dude, you? I had like a ton of stuff, which um, like it was in my house, and like some stuff happened, and other people were living there, and like the house got destroyed. No. And, yeah, I didn't even want to go back there. I was just like, bro. Is that the house with the mini ramp? No, that was a different house. Mm. That was when I moved from there into like my house in Westport, and then I wasn't staying there. I wasn't living there, so I was like, oh, I'll just rent it out, and then. These people that were there, like, oh. pre pretty much destroyed it. And then, like, cops came in and, like, raided the house and, like, destroyed all my shit. So no I was like, bro, I don't even want to go there. Yeah. Why are the cops, was people were selling drugs out of there yeah, or something? Yeah, it was, like, really? some sketchy shit, oh yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Jeez. No wonder you didn't want to go back yeah. there. I wouldn't want to go went, back there I went either. there and, like, walked into the downstairs and I was just like, bro, this is, what? And I just left. And, like, so I guess some of my friends went back and, like, they cleaned some of it up, but I guess like a bunch of like my boards and stuff are in like a storage thing, which I got to go back to mass and get. Oh, but like, wow. yeah, after that all happened, I was just like, so I don't know what's saved and like what's good, you Damn. know? Yeah. Be cool to have a pair of those shoes though. I'm sure Dude. some people, somebody's uh, somewhere has a pair. You I know. know. I look on eBay every once do in a you? while for like a, just even a Hamilton shoe. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's, I haven't found any, but. Dude, your, your shoe release part of it is insane. Yeah. Yeah. You almost died. That's where yeah, you got in an died. accident. Yeah. So <laughs> you, they had a bunch of IROC cars there, right? Or well, something. Camaros. Yeah. Camaros. Yeah. And you get into a Camaro and the guy takes off and you guys crash. Is that. <laughs> what? Yeah. It was crazy. Like, so it was like. You, you've, you've seen the spot. So you know the, by you, audio. No, you you know um, where Transworld is. Oh, Transworld. And, and the um, F one like yeah yeah yeah, go -kart yeah, yeah. Spot is. yeah yeah yeah. When you're going up that hill, there's that like cliff. He went up the cliff in the car. <laughs> yeah. What Did, happened? Who, who was, was driving? All right, so like for my pro shoe release party, Jeff Taylor like he rented out F one racing, and then he invited like the whole San Diego Camaro Club to basically do like a little car show. Car, yeah. So we're driving up, and I'm getting to like the F1 thing, like in the audio RV. Did you know it was a shoe release, but you knew? No, like I was just like, I, I don't know where we're going. Yeah. So we would just show up there and I saw like Camaro's out front. I'm like, they buy me a car? I was yeah. like, what? Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> this is like, no way. This is great. So I get out there and then like I'm checking out the cars and stuff. And uh, this one guy, he had that blue Camaro. He had just won a car show that day. And I was like, damn, this thing is badass. Like, hey, you want to go for a ride? And I was like, yeah, I'm going to go like, ride some go-karts and stuff with everybody and like probably later or whatever because he knew I was into like cars and racing and like he wanted to show me that his car had all kinds of power and okay. super fast and stuff so oh, yeah cool later on so rode go-karts for a while and then I was like hey you want to go for that ride I was like all right yeah sure oh, so get in the car sit down put my seatbelt on he like starts it up pulls up like five feet starts doing a burnout starts fishtailing this way and then fishtails this way loses it goes over the curb down the hill smashes into a tree the car lifts up and it's like going over like almost like ready to go off the cliff but there's oh. like a little small tree that hit Head. the driver's door that oh. stopped us from going into another parking lot that was like a 12 foot drop yeah and i was just like bro like i look over at him like 
Holy shit. He barely like, even got like 50 feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he crashed the car. I was in the car for seriously like 35 seconds or 30 seconds. We, that all happened. I was just like, get me the fuck out of here. Shit. Yeah. Like unbuckled my seatbelt and like got out of the car. Everyone's running down the hill. <laughs> yeah, bad. You're right. I'm like, bro, I'm good. Look at the car though. That thing is wrecked. <laughs> dude. dude, he destroyed it. I was yeah. like, bro, I cannot believe that happened. I felt so bad for the dude. Yeah, but he should have fucking dude. knew how to yeah. drive his own car. Jeez. True, very true. But like, still, it's like if that tree damn. wasn't there, that you guys would have been yeah, like problems. we would have been like on the roof or on something. The, right, yeah. right. That would have hurt. Yeah, yeah. that <laughs> little tree. Yeah, little tree, man. Go there and give it a hug. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I would have yeah. dug that thing up and replanted <laughs> it in my house. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> But listen, that wasn't even like your first time, like because you didn't you, you you broke your neck. Yes. Yeah. Jeez. While you were <laughs> like on the back of some boat or something, right? You yeah. were like, what were you doing in or a little raft or something? What was? Yeah. So that was like in 2011. So fast that was all around the time. I, we're fast forwarding, but we're <laughs> we're on this topic. So I thought I'd yeah. You know. So that was like 2011. I was like drinking. Mm. All of our friends are drinking. We're just on this boat cruising around and. He has this little raft. So the raft is basically like, it's almost like a glass on its side. So when you climb in it, there's just raft all around you, around your head, but your feet just dangle out the back. Kind of like a donut type thing, right? Is it like a... Yeah, it's, it's like kind of like a cylinder. Cylinder. Okay. So as like a, they put you in a whip, you just kind of barrel roll across the water. So they're just ripping you around and stuff. And then they made me hit a wake. So I like shot up, missile dive, wait, shot upward and then missile dive down. So like, I'm like this, but like, going down into the water, like yeah. diving, but with raft around my head. So the raft hits and then my head hits and then all my body weight comes down and like cracked my neck forward and oh. it broke C6 and T1. So it broke two vertebrae. Yeah, it was pretty gnarly. And I didn't even know they were broken. I thought just like, oh, I'm wrecked. Like, Oh, so you were able to swim? You, you, oh, no, you were, no. No. <laughs> no like I, I, I was wrecked for sure, but okay. I was like, oh, like... I didn't think I was going, oh, I broke my neck. Yeah. You know, I was just like, oh, okay. maybe I pulled muscles in my back, but I had a life jacket on. So came back around, they pulled me up on the boat. I'm just laying down and I'm just like, bro, um, I'm wrecked. Get back to shore, like back to my friend's house. I'm just laying on the floor for a bit. I'm just like, bro, like, oh my God, I'm hurting. So I ended up just kept drinking, went out partying. and Oh, geez. Yeah. And like, I just, I partied. For a broken neck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I ended up partying for like a week and then oh I was just God. like, bro, like I, I got to go to the hospital. Like something's wrong. So I ended up going to the hospital, get like x-rays done. And then doctor comes back in. He's like, yeah, you have a broken neck. And I was just like, bro, like, like, what am I doing myself? Like a tear like came down my eye. And I was just so just like, like, bro, like what? Like, like what an idiot, you know? At least you now I knew. Yeah. At least you knew. I just but wanted still. to get the confirmation. Yeah. <laughs> of course, dude. Jesus What's, Christ. How do you fix that? Uh, basically they gave me like a neck brace to wear. So, Luckily, I didn't have to get like surgery or right. like a halo and have screws in my head. Or oh that'd be, gosh, that'd be, that would be gnarly. But yeah. luckily, there was no surgery needed, and it just kind of healed on its own. Yeah. Oh wow. Damn. Yeah. But yeah, that was like the worst injury that I've ever had because I, in terms of like trying to like skate after that, like it was ridiculous, and that's what pretty much got me into like weight training and all that. You know? Oh, was it? Yeah, but like when my neck was like broken, I couldn't even sneeze. Like. It, my body wouldn't even allow me because you know when you sneeze it's almost like a like a, a joke it's a, like a violent it was like I would go to yeah. sneeze but it was almost like I was holding my nose and it you know when it just kind of shuts you down it's yeah, like, yeah yeah and it, it just yeah. holds it in I would try to sneeze but my body was just like it just knew I was injured it was protecting so it would, your it just wouldn't neck. let me you know, yeah it wouldn't let me it was just like so awkward and it was seriously like the yeah. worst injury how long were you uh, with the neck brace and everything I mean I just wore it for like two weeks after they gave me it, but it was just like uncomfortable to wear, but just like trying to sleep at night was very hard. Like yeah. I have to, actually had to like sleep on like a floor cause I couldn't like sleep on a bed cause trying to twist or move. There was just like so much pain. It was really, really gnarly. Wow. Painkillers, did they give you a bunch of stuff? No, no, or? I didn't take none of that shit. No. None of that? No. I drank. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> okay, that <was> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. I don't know what's what. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not really big on pharmaceuticals, yeah. you know, unless you really you need them or something. But also drinking, too, it's... I, it's, uh, I don't know what's better for you, you know? Neither. I know, <laughs> yeah, but you know, sure. if you Shut need something, out. yeah. what are you going to do? Yeah. You know? So you're drinking a lot. Yeah. Yeah. I was drinking a lot, yeah. But also, too, you said that got you into the whole... Um, you know, body or uh, 
what do you call it? Strength, strength training. Strength training. Weightlifting. Yeah. yeah. Like that, that brought you into that yeah. whole scene. Yeah. I don't consider it like strictly bodybuilding. Strength training. Yeah. Yeah. So that brought you into strength training and mm-hmm. doing all that stuff. You thought maybe I need to take better care of my body. Yeah. Well, it was like I was doing resistant, well, resistant training. Well, physical therapy, you know, doing like resistance sure. bands, moving around. And I was like, oh, it's kind of cool, you know, challenging yourself to get stronger over time. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, this is pretty awesome. So then I started like going to the gym, started working out and stuff. And then I was like, wow, this is pretty fun. It was like the skate park all over again. Interesting. You know, just a whole new group of people that like yeah. you don't know that's like doing exercise on different machines and stuff. So I just kind of like fell in love with like the just learning new things and then challenging yourself. And huh. Yeah, it's been super fun. Did it, did it take you a while? Because I think the whole thing of going to the gym and doing this, it, it, it it's a process to kind of get into. You oh, know? definitely. Yeah, but it becomes like your new routine. Right. But yeah, it's like routine. with me, I get very addicted to oh, you do. whatever I do. You know, I was like with skateboarding, like I, dude, that's all I did. Mm-hmm. Lived and breathed it. And then the gym, it became like my new skateboard, you know, the new skateboarding for me. So I couldn't really skate, but then I was like, starting to skate a little bit but still like the recovery process took so long because i couldn't like be explosive or or move quickly like Mm. to work out like you know you can lay on the bench and then just press weights move them and right it was a very different type of exercise compared to like skateboarding where you have to fully use your entire body you bulked up pretty crazy yeah well i I wasn't skating so then i was just kind of eating i was reading about like oh what do bodybuilders eat you know i was reading like magazines and shit and they had like these crazy meal plans where you had to eat like like five times a day or something, you know? So I was like, all right, I guess I'll try that. Like thousands of calories yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And then so like before I got into like lifting around the time when I was like drinking a lot, like mm. I got super skinny. Like I wasn't always that skinny, but around like the street league time, like I got like really, really skinny because so I wasn't eating. I was just drinking. I was mm. like super depressed. I didn't care about shit. Like I went through like a pretty dark point in my life oh, did you? yeah like during like the dc days and shit and that's, mm. that's where like my career just started like going downhill and i was drinking a lot and i just really stopped caring about skating wow. you know we it's backtrack and get into that yeah uh-huh. we, we should can, backtrack and get we back can backtrack that, that yeah. yeah let's yeah. backtrack <laughs> well wait actually i was gonna ask like what were your sponsors saying when you got hurt after i broke my neck my contracts for monster and dc were up at the end of that year so then it was really like, great, what what am I going to do with my life? Oh, you know, yeah. I, had, I had no idea what to do, you know? And it was like, again, skateboarding, there's no retirement plan. When audio went out of business, then you went over to DC. DC, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they were still kind of in business. There were was they? like yeah. some stuff going around, on. Yeah. But that's when Jeff Taylor left and yeah. everyone was talking and Jeff was like, bro, bounce. Once Jeff was gone, the whole thing was dead. Yeah. Oh, was yeah. We like, all knew. Right, yeah. for sure. But, but I he, think they, they they were kind of letting people go like one by one. It wasn't just like a massive team layoff. It was like, oh, Chris, you know, you're gone. Oh, Joey, you're gone. No, you know, it was like a, it was like a step by step process. I think process. Jeff handled that pretty well where he basically like gave everyone a heads up like, yo, dude, like, yeah, I talked to this this brand you should get on this company whatever else you know. yeah he never did that for me but i know um i can imagine there was no home for you then <laughs> there was no home for me yeah. and now i just ordered a bunch of hamiltons to come to do that. <laughs> but didn't jeff taylor go to dc from there later, that was yeah. later oh yeah. okay, okay. okay. i had already oh, been right. on dc and then jeff came back oh hmm. okay okay how did you initially get on dc um so the way that whole thing went down was audio was basically done and over and so people were hitting up jim thebo like asking about me like oh what's up with nick like Ooh. what's he gonna do where's he gonna go so because I, like even before you turned pro you had one hell of a fucking year where well, you should have been sody yeah 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 oh like, actually, yeah they, you were, fucking, one got you it were on year, right? fire yeah day yeah. one got it <laughs> yeah yeah that was, you should have that was pretty it. crazy <laughs> day one like they wanted to give it to you but you were still am yeah i was i was still am at the yeah. time oh wow yeah so actually yes from from 19 to 21 is when i i didn't drink and so it wasn't like I had like a problem with drinking mm-hmm. in my teenage years. I was just a teenage kid, go to parties here and there, drink with your friends. Sure, get, get normal, loaded. normal. Yeah, so like one morning I was going outside, all my friends are there, ready to go skate, Bob and the whole crew, and I just go, go outside and I'm just like so hungover and I just start throwing up and I'm just like, bro, I can't go skating. Sorry guys. And I stayed home and I'm just thinking, I'm like, I can't go skating because I went to a party last night and I drank and I'm hungover, like, how stupid is that? Right. You know, so I'm like, you know, 
this is bullshit. Like, I'm just going to quit drinking. So I stopped drinking at like 19. And that's when shit just really like escalated for me. Like took off. I was just like super consistent. Like my recovery was great. I could skate every single day. I could skate for hours and hours and hours. And I would seriously get like three clips a day or something. Like yeah. Yeah. Wow. Three or four clips a day. Like Damn. I was just like on fire. Just shit was just happening. Yeah. You know, it was crazy. And then, um, <laughs> when I turned 21, I had some friends over at my house and stuff. Like friends would always come over. They could drink or whatever. I didn't drink. So okay. my 21st birthday, like some of my friends, oh, you're a bitch. You're never going to drink again. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I'm just like, oh, I was like, oh, yeah, you know what? <laughs> oh, no. I grabbed a beer, like chugged the beer. And then it just like lit a fire. And I was just like, bro, like, let's go. Like, <laughs> it just from like. From that point on. Yeah. Like I went hard from like 21 to 26. How's the power on 27? Here? From 21 to 26 or 27, you were full raging. Full party mode, yeah. Really? Damn. And so that's where like my skating and stuff started going downhill. Cause, right. I mean, I was still like, when I first started drinking, obviously I was still skating and I could still skate and like get shit done. But mm-hmm. every night I'd just go home and like hang out with friends, drink beers, party, play beer pong and wow. all kinds of stuff. And then um, just over the years of just drinking more and more, like started getting more and more unhealthy. I wasn't yeah. eating good. And like, so I started getting skinnier and skinnier. And then- You were um, already skinny to begin with. Yeah, I was already skinny. I mean, I had like some like muscle tone to me, but yeah. I wasn't like jacked in yeah. any way at all. Mm-hmm. But like then around like the street league era, yeah. you know, I was on DC and stuff. And that's when I was like my skinniest. There was like a photo that I, I, I posted as like a Transformation Tuesday of when I was like the skinniest, where I'm just, dude, I look like a child. How much <laughs> How much did you weigh back then? I, dude, think? I think I was like like 160, like low 160s or something, even like maybe 158s, like okay. high 150s or something. But that was like where I was really, really skinny. And I was like, holy shit. When did I you even notice that, at the time that you were skinny and all this stuff was happening or were you just kind of on a, dude, I was, you didn't even notice. Yeah. I was in such like a severe, like depression funk that like, I just, I don't know. I, it, it was almost like it was just, everything was just numb. You know, yeah. like I would just go skate. I had to go to the contest. DC's flying there to, to skate. And like, my skating performance was shit and mm. I was just like, bro, it's whack, whatever. And then like nighttime came, the after parties, I'd get lit, you know, I'd yeah. get all fired up and and then it just kept happening, you know, I was still going on trips and I would, sometimes I would get clips or sometimes I would just get hurt and it was just like, this sucks, you know, yeah. and then ended up breaking my neck and then just like... Every, it just kind of <laughs> snowballed. Yeah. yeah, it was just like nothing good came out of drinking again. Wow. But you had other shit going on in your life though too. Yeah, I mean, like, I always had, like, shit with, like, family issues and all that. Like, I'm not using that as an excuse, but, like, I had stuff to do with it. And then yeah. just even with, like, since I was drinking, like, I knew my skate performance wasn't as great. Mm-hmm. And I just saw shit declining. So then I was like, fuck, whatever, I'll just drink, you know. It just takes everything away yeah. like, in the meantime. But it's like I knew what I could do and I knew what I was capable of on a skateboard. Right. But I was like, I just can't do it. Like, my body wasn't able to do it because I just wasn't that well conditioned like sure. I was. You oh know? yeah, totally. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. So you're starting to decline and then what D- DC, does your contract run up or something and they don't renew it? Yeah. So that, that was the end of 2011 Okay. where like my DC and monster contract was up. Monster. Mm-hmm. I didn't yeah, even know so. you were on monster. Really? Yeah. The scratches. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> did you have to sew a little patch on that gray beanie or what? Yeah. There did was, you there was, there was a little you? patch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for like contests and stuff, contests and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah it was cool, man. I had Damn. tons and tons of energy drinks. I used to mix That's... it with like booze and shit. Oh, like, you did? Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. It was stupid. Oh, it was stupid. <laughs> I mean, it was cool to get the drinks, but like, and my mindset where I was, like, it just wasn't good. Yeah. You know, but it is well, what it listen, is. Listen, I mean, real DC monster. I mean, you must have been getting some good money, you know? Yeah, Like, for sure. that was some good. And it sucks, too, because, man, if you didn't go down that path of, you know, drinking and stuff. I'd probably have a house here in California. There you go. I'd still be skating. Right. Yeah. Man. But, I mean, it is what it you is. You can't like, control it, right? I don't just regret anything. Sure. I did what I did, but I feel like it's made me who I am today and, like, my past and story my past is a story for people to see what i did yeah. and where i'm at now exactly you know? so like there's hope for anybody it's right. just you gotta want to change 
wanting to change is the key word. Exactly. Yeah. You can't force anybody to change. Nope. You got to figure it out and do it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. People have tried, but I was just like, Oh, did people actually try to come up and talk to you? Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. There's, there's a lot more that happened after breaking my neck because that that led me into a whole whole nother life of like some hardcore shit. Now why? (laughs) Breaking your neck, I mean, listen, that's an injury that, what, it took like a month or so to heal. No, it was longer than that. It was like six months. Six months? Yeah. I thought you said you were out of your little neck thing in two weeks. Well, I didn't wear it. Oh, you you didn't wear it. I was still like, like this, like I couldn't like, Move, huh. you know and you were going yeah. to physical therapy and everything for your neck everything was super stiff and tight and then like with physical therapy obviously obviously they start like small yeah very small yeah. and just kind of working up to like a greater range of motion so mm-hmm. it was taking a long time and like i didn't even finish the physical therapy like i was like all right whatever like yeah. i know what to do okay you know? how long were you going on this road of like you know self-destruction if you want to call it that <laughs> all right you know so, i don't know what to yeah, end up in a coma yeah yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> you so, to, okay, yeah, go yeah, ahead, yeah. go ahead. I just, this is interesting. So, um, yeah, I was drinking a lot. I was partying a lot. And so I broke my neck 2011. And then shit just ended up getting worse, you know. like What's real doing at this point in, in D.C.? Are they just... Uh, well, I, I guess like Jim and, you know, I would talk to Jim and Darren here and there. And they didn't really know exactly what oh. was going on. But they could obviously see that I wasn't skating more. But sure. they knew I broke my neck. And so I wasn't skating and then um, I ended up getting into like, I started going out to like clubs and shit. And then mm. I got into like doing like Molly. And oh. from there it led to like doing like ketamine and stuff. And so like wow. from there again with like, I have a very addictive personality. And like when I like something, I really like it. So okay. <laughs> the first time I did Molly, I was just like, bro, where have I been? <laughs> I was just My like, God. this is insane. I can't like... <laughs> I'm just figuring about this now. Like, it was insane, bro. So like, I went like down the road of like going to like clubs all the time, like okay. taking Molly and just wow. having that like that body high. I'm just like it just raises you up and you feel like a million dollars regardless. Just drinking of the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. It was just crazy. You know, I was just lived that for a while. What's and then, ketamine? Like, what is this? What is that? Cat tranquilizer. Ketamine. Yeah, it's a tranquilizer. So it's almost like a anesthesia. So like, what does that do? Though? It's what like do you, a, you go to you go to bed or something. <laughs> <laughs> Should I take a nap now? Yeah, That's I'm party. gonna take my ketamine now. I'm gonna take a little nap. I'm gonna take a nap. You know, I don't need ketamine oh to take God. a nap. No, but what does it do? Like, what is? So it kind of it kind of gives you like is a, it a pill. No, it's like a a powder or like a liquid form that you can like turn into powder. So it's almost it kind of looks it? like yeah, it looks like oh. coke kind of. Okay. So basically sniff it and if you took like a little bump of it it kind of gives you like almost like a kind of like a a good buzz but kind of like drunky dreamy feeling interesting wow but if you take a lot of it then you can basically go into like a k-hole which you go to sleep okay but it's like a crazy outer body experience real dream that it's just like bro and then you kind of just wake up and you're just like what the fuck like really you know, like, you're it's fighting just, off a bunch of cops yeah oh pissed. yeah that we'll, we'll get to that too <laughs> Whoa, there's a lot of we'll, there's a lot of we'll get to this yeah. we'll get to what? Yeah. but uh so yeah i got i ended up getting into like doing wow. ketamine again and like i just liked it a lot okay. you know so like i was doing it a bunch and then um so my first run in with the cops i was i had been up all night because like you know i hit up like the kd i was like yo need some more K, whatever. And they were all out. So I was like, all right, whatever. Hmm. You know, they were trying to go to New York to pick it up. So I was like, you know what? I'll just drive you guys. Cause they wanted to like hop on a train and then for them to get to the train to go there. And then by the time they got back, I was like, man, I don't want to wait that long. You could have wanted it now. Yeah. So yeah. I was like, not that I was like a fiend, but I was just like, I want to do it. You know, sure. like, I had nothing else to do. So I was like, oh, whatever, I'll bring you guys. I got nothing else to do. So okay. went up there, picked Three them. Three and a half hour drive. Just for Three and a half hour drive. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Okay. So I drove to Providence, picked them up, drove to New York. And you're coming off of just uh, partying. Yeah. So picked them up, went to New York City, had to wait around for hours. Ended up meeting up with the deal and they did their thing. And then we drove back. So like doing like bumps of K on the way back. Wow. Dropped them off. And then... um I had nowhere to go at the time. Like I was like fighting with my brother and like we had an apartment together at the time and okay. I was like, bro, I can't go there. And I was just like, I don't know what to do. So I ended up going down to the beach and I had my dog with me at the time. I was like, mm. oh, I'm just going to walk my dog, whatever. So I'd been up all night. I didn't sleep. I was like basically doing K all night. And then I was like, oh, I'm just 
going to do some more K. So wow. I just did like a, a line of K. It wasn't nothing crazy, but like something just triggered me, set me off. So like, I don't remember. The, the only thing that I remember is when I was handcuffed, strapped down in a ambulance and I'm like looking out the back door. I'm like, what's going on? Where am I? What did I do? Like, where's my dog? You know what I mean? Oh. So like, I guess I freaking was like yelling, screaming. Like they said, I was like praying. And then like the cops came and to like, try to calm me down and chill me out and like they knew who I was but like they knew I wasn't a bad kid I just was going through some shitty shit but, okay um like yeah so they were trying to calm me down I was like too aggressive or whatever so they ended up tasing me and they tased me and then like I guess I was like ripping the tasers out of me and they tased me like six times <laughs> holy and, like, shit the cops were trying to get me down and I was like wrestling them and like like just like Hulk style throwing <laughs> people like it was gnarly like the cop was telling me the story in and the this hospital. is when you're skinny no I was, I was already like working out and gotcha. stuff but, okay. I mean I wasn't like super yoked <laughs> right. but it was just like the ketamine gave me like superhuman Whoa. strength or something yeah. ripping off tasers I know yeah. it was dude, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> dude wow yeah, I don't remember nothing like yeah. I don't remember this is them telling you none this. of that yeah. I wish wow. they had body cams for all that like, I know that dude, yeah. Wow. yeah it was crazy so like you know then I'm like so you're, you're in the back of an ambulance. Ambulance going Strapped. through the hospital. I'm, and then, um, you know, I'm handcuffed to the stretcher. So they right. get me in the hospital. They're checking me out, making sure I'm okay. And mm -hmm. one of the cops stayed with me and he's just kind of telling me the story, what happened. And Damn. I'm just like, bro, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know what happened. He's like, yeah, you know, you're fine. Just, you need to just get some help. And then the doctor's like, oh, can you please lean forward? I, I lean forward. And then she, she has like pliers. She's like ripping things out of my back. I'm like, how, what are you doing? It was like, the taser pieces and she's like oh you got tased i was like i got tased i was like what you know and then that's when the cop was like telling me like sorry bro you know he's like yeah i was like Jeez. man i'm super sorry and then like <laughs> and then uh Damn. so from from the hospital like they put me in a cop car i had to go to court that day so i went to court and then you know the judge gave me my sentence or whatever uh, well i didn't have to go to jail my whatever it's called like the probation or what something happens yeah or, so i did yeah. get probation and so from there i had to like go pick up my car from the police station so i had to go in there and like get my keys i'm like guys i'm super sorry and where's your dog i uh, ended up taking my dog they had okay. my dog yeah okay. so wow. i ended up getting in my car and then <laughs> i drove from there back to providence and told them the story what happened and then i bought more k and then just fucking no. you just kept going. yeah that, that wasn't even a wake-up call for no, you no like i would like dude i did not care like when i tell you i don't care i didn't it was like whatever i was like bro like you're not gonna believe it i had like one shoe and like taser my marks clothes everywhere. Were all dirty i had like grass stains on me i'm like yeah i just got tased they just took all my shit and whoa dude. whatever and then ended up like getting more from them and like it was just really stupid Man. you know but like i just was in this mindset where i didn't even care you know it was shitty to like think back and like think about it now but it was like it is what it is. Like nobody's gonna change it unless sure. I change it. Right. So, yeah. What was the defining moment where you said, "I this is not, I, I can't do this anymore." After that happened, you know, I I was doing K for a little bit, and then like, you know, then like friends would see me like messed up, and they knew, and like, bro, what, what are you doing? You're on probation. Like, you need to stop. Like, this is bullshit. Mm -hmm. You know. And then like, there were so many run-ins with my friends, and them telling me, and I'm just like, oh, fuck, I'm sorry. I'll stop now, and like, throw it away. And then like, mm -hmm. like. Fuck it, I'm gonna do it again yeah, like a week yeah, later yeah. or something. And so then like it was like one day we're all day drinking. I think it was like Memorial Weekend. This was actually 2013, mm -hmm. cruising around. And then, you know, I've been drinking all day long and then we were just taking turns driving my friend's car. Oh, no way, I'll just drive to the next bar. So I get to the next bar, it's like 10 at night or 10.30 at night. And I'm like shit faced, I'm drunk. You know, everybody's drunk, but I was like, I knew what was going on. I wasn't like obliterated to where I was just like, yeah. can't walk. And I had the keys in my pocket and you know, everyone's like getting rowdy over here. And I'm just like, I want to do some K, you know what I mean? And like, so those friends, like they didn't do any. So I just okay. went outside, hopped in the car, started hammering to like <laughs> hammering to like, go get it, go get some. And dude, I was like, you'd have to drive to New York this time. Did no, you? no, okay. no. So I was like driving up there. I got some, like they, they, my friend called me like, oh, where are you at? I'm like, oh, I'm just going to Wendy's. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Oh my God. I was like, I'll be right back. Were you trying to hide it from all your friends at this point too? Or yeah, I mean, I couldn't hide it because like yeah, yeah. They, they would know. But right. I was just like, oh, I'm just going to Wendy's, be right back. So I ended up going, pick some up. And then 
I did like a little bump there and then like I left. And then the last thing I remember is like I was parked at a stop, like I was about to get on the highway. So I'm just sitting at a light. I'm like, oh, fuck, I'll do another bump. Oh, wow. So I did like a, another little bump, okay? And then got on the highway, started driving. And that was the last thing I remember. Like, and Whoa. I ended up, when I realized what was going on, I was handcuffed again. Like, no way. I was way. in the back of a state trooper's car. And I'm like, yo, what's going on? What did I do? Like, what, what, what's, like, I had no idea what was going on. So I was driving back to New Bedford and mm -hmm. I ended up falling asleep, passing out. Like, and the car ended up coming to a stop in the middle, in the middle of the of highway. The, whoa, so hey. like, dude, if it was any other car, so it was like a, a Volkswagen Golf. Okay. So I don't know if you guys have ever drove one of those cars. Mm -hmm. They kind of like, you kind of got to push on the gas pedal to get it to go. Gotcha. But if you get off the gas, it'll just kind of come to a stop. Okay. You know, like pretty much any car that you just put it in drive, it'll just kind of start going. going. Kind of yeah. 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 So like, dude, like, I don't know how or why, but like you're in the middle of the freeway, yeah, like passed it, out. It stopped like when I fell asleep driving, and then um, I guess like police police officers were on the highway. They were like transporting somebody, and they saw the car. So then they stopped, and then they thought like the car died or something. And then they were trying to get it over to the side to the road. side of the right, road. And right. like I guess I was you're like lucky you weren't like rear-ended. I know. Yeah, or I could have like drove into the woods and yeah, crashed. Yeah, anything could have yeah. been yeah. done for. But yeah, I guess like I was like kind of resisting or whatever. They were almost going to tase me. This is what the Jeez. state trooper was telling me. And like, I was already on probation at the time too. So I was just like, bro, like, dude, I'm done for. Yeah. You know? And then like, so the cop brought me to like the police station and he's like, asking me questions. He's like, oh, where'd you get the Coke? And I'm just like, damn, like they found it. And I'm like, oh, it's, it's not Coke. It's K, it's ketamine. And he's damn. like, oh, okay, all right. And he's like, no, do you, he asked me about like taking the breathalyzer and all that stuff. So I was like, you know, in my head, it was like, oh, if you don't, if you refuse to take it, you lose your license for, I think, six months or something. Mm -hmm. But if you do take it, you only lose it for 30 or something. So I was in my head, I was like, oh, uh, 30 days sounds cool. Yeah, like, yeah. I, think, I think I could beat this. Okay. But like, I was pretty Rammered. drunk, you didn't know? Do the math very yeah, well. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, they didn't end up having a breathalyzer there. So we had to drive all the way from Dartmouth all the way to Cape Cod, which was like, 40 minutes or something okay. to take the breathalyzer took it failed it damn <laughs> and they drove me back up there and then asked me more questions then i went to jail spent the night in jail the next morning my friends picked me up and then like i had to go to court the next day so uh -huh. dude that day like i've never felt like a type of anxiety like that that i've ever felt like i seriously wanted to like leave my body and be like yo i'm all set like i can't live this anymore damn like i was so nervous because i was like i'm going to jail this is it like this is i'm right. seriously going to jail and like there's nothing i can do about it but luckily i had like a good lawyer and mm. uh, my lawyer got me out of it and so like i had to be on probation with like drug testing and stuff so went through that and then that's when i came out here and i stayed with you and I was basically living here. That's when I was like starting to skate more and so stuff. So I was in like 2013. It's like the summer of 2013. Okay. So I had like just lost my license. And when did you take the uh, the bath salts? Oh, that was oh, before all that. Oh, that was before that. Yeah. That oh, so was, you were uh, geez, you were fully salts. going. You were going crazy. Yeah, I didn't mean to take bath salts. Oh, yeah. Like what wow. what I thought was ketamine. Mm -hmm. It ended up having like they ended up like testing the drugs oh, after wow. I was in the hospital because I went into like ended up going to a coma for three weeks and so they ended up testing the drugs that See I had were, yeah. and there was like meth bath salts in it like all kinds of like Dude. crazy See, now shit that's sketchy you, <laughs> I real. mean you don't know what you're taking yeah. you think you're taking one thing and uh, bath salts yeah yeah that was crazy yeah so I forget what year that was was that 20 I think that was 2012 so that was like before all of this Right. shit happened you know with right. like running into the police so yeah that was like 2012 because i got into like doing molly and stuff and then got into the k and then ended up like going into a coma and then like bro like my life was ridiculous after that like i like didn't even i had the craziest paranoia once like i came out of like the coma you know right. like my family was like in the hospital to, like there to see me and sure. stuff and i'm just like looking at them like like What's like, going what on? are you guys doing? Like, you guys made it too? Like, I seriously didn't know where I was. I thought I was, like, on another planet in, like, a capsule that, like, <laughs> I swear, like I, like, I didn't know what happened. Like, I just opened my eyes, and I, didn't, I was like, you guys made it too? Like, I thought, like, something... Yeah, you got transported to somewhere. the world happened. Like, dude, I swear. That's it was insane. crazy. Yeah, so then, like, I was in that hospital for, like... Uh, from there, they... Well, actually, after I came out of the coma, they transferred me to, like... Brigham and Women's in the Boston in Boston, and then I was there for 
I think a week and then from there they they sent me to this other like almost like mental hospital which I didn't understand why I was there right there was a lot of like like psycho people in there that were on like crazy meds and they're just like talking to themselves and and I'm just like all right like why am I like I know I'm okay like I, I kind of know what's going on but why am I here yeah why, like, why am I here with all these people like I had no say in what I could do I couldn't just be like they, all right they were I'm out of here like sure so like because my el- my aunt had my health proxy so she basically said what goes you know oh, like, okay. oh she's gonna be here to like, get better or whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. Clean you up, yeah. yeah and I was like bro I cannot stay here no more you know I would have check-ins with like the doctors every couple of days or sure, something yeah. just like four or five doctors are all just looking at me like I'm nuts and I'm just like I'm like nah I feel pretty good I'm, I'm ready to get out of here like oh nope you're doing better and I'm like nah like I'm good I'm like I want to leave wow. like I was like I'm not like these people that are here like they're just like very I'm not talking shit about anybody but like they were like gnarly like nuts had like some mental problems sure. and I'm like bro I'm like uh, I'm pretty normal like I'm ready to get out of here were they so, giving you meds while you were there yeah so oh, I'm sure they had me on like I think this med called Lexapro which I'm not really sure what what it does but huh. um, I just took it because that's what they gave me I'm, I have to take it so I was taking that for a while and then like I was like alright I need to get out of here so I ended up calling my aunt and I was like can you get me out of here like she's like alright you can get out of here but you're not going back to New Bedford you're gonna have to come to Florida Wow. so I was like alright fine I'll go there so ended up flying down to Florida and then I started working with like this therapist where she was like um, basically handling it was called like a in outpatient treatment so basically I'd have to go see her hmm. every couple of days or something and like I was still on the medication but that whole point of my life like I was I had severe severe like paranoia like I thought everybody was out to get me like if the TV was on and somebody was talking I thought they were talking about me so like oh wow dude I literally could not go anywhere like I was like like I didn't even want to live anymore I was like bro if I if I wake up tomorrow and this is like like I just don't want to wake up tomorrow you know like I, I couldn't deal with it no more because there was nowhere I could go do you, you think know? this was a, a a combination of like their withdrawals and the drugs and all that stuff like combined it, like trying to get out of your system possibly so speak, yeah you know? so like know. this kind of went on for like a long time so did time. you go to Florida then back in New Bedford and that's yeah. yeah so I was in Florida then went back to New Bedford and uh so yeah so that went on for a while and I was just like just completely screwed up you know like I would be in the car or something and I I even thought my aunt was like involved too I was hmm. like oh she's in on it too were you like, taking anything at this point too were you prescribed stuff yeah this, maybe I that's was still on the what, meds which probably made me that's, psycho right you know? that's it, probably it just what it was really yeah. screwed me wow. up so um I lived down in Florida for a while and then like my brother came down to visit but and one of my friends drove my car down like a few weeks before that okay. and then I was like oh, I'm, I'm going back to New Bedford so I ended up driving back up to New Bedford and you know I stayed on the meds for a while and mm. then one day I was just like you know what? I'm I'm not taking these anymore. I stopped taking them and then you know like 2 weeks in like st- stuff started to kind of fade away and you know and it's almost like you know I'm just kind of waiting for it you know looking around and you know just waiting for something to be triggered to where it's great it's it's back okay, you know you know what I mean right. so it was like such a gnarly paranoia that I could not escape that no matter what it was you know, like I even thought like my brother or anybody, you know, I just thought I, I couldn't trust anybody, Damn. you know, and it, and it felt like I did something like super bad or gnarly or wrong that mm. everybody knew that like it's him. You'd go out in public you, and you'd feel dude, this. Yeah. It was so gnarly. That's like, insane. Yeah. Like I couldn't, it, I couldn't even deal with it. When you stopped taking all the drugs, I mean, all the pharmaceutical mm-hmm. stuff, did you, did it you clear slowly up? slowly started to come back. Yeah. And it was just like, wow, like I feel feel normal feel pretty good I feel normal and it was just like I was like bro like you know I'd be outside and just like looking around I'm like bro this is great to be alive and like be normal you know it was that's why I really said it about crazy, the pharmaceutical bro. I don't trust these pharmaceutical yeah. shits no. you know sketchy. it's so sketchy yeah, yeah. they all get a kickback from all that so it, they're trying oh, to keep you on that stuff yeah yeah absolutely and then that farm that pill leads to a different pill and that causes this and then that you know you got to take this pill for this and yeah you have a whole medicine cabinet full of pills in mm-hmm I barely even take Advil, Raj. You know what I'm saying? Try to stay off that Advil. <laughs> <laughs> so when you, so you, you, your mind started clearing up, right? And is this when you really got into the health conscious vibe? Yeah. So well, 
that whole coma thing happened before like I ran into the law and stuff. So like, by the way, in the coma, do you, did you, you, do you just wake up or, I mean, what's it like being in a coma? Are, are, do you even, well, well, do you do, go in and out of, I mean, are you, <laughs> no, but are, are you dreaming at all? Do you remember anything or? Well, like, I just, uh, I was on a different planet. Bro. You just woke up out of the blue mm-hmm. and you were in the hospital. No dreams, yeah. no, no meetings with higher God or anybody? No. I wish. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that whole coma like stuff happened. That was like. 2012 mm-hmm. and then 2013 was like when I started getting running with the law and stuff and I was just like bro like this is gnarly yeah. you know and after I got off that second time of like not going to jail and I was like bro I can't be I can't be doing this shit sure you know? wow. but then I was like I was still drinking and stuff and that's when like I came out here the summer of like 2013 okay. and so like whatever I'd still go out to the bar and drink here and there and stuff and then then it was just like, I think it was October of 2013 where I was like, you know what? Drinking does zero for me. You know, hmm. it doesn't benefit my life in any way. Okay. You know, like, you know, we'd be going out here and there and I'm like, oh yeah, it was fun. You know, and then like one day I'm like. But you were still like, I want some Molly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you were yeah. still. Maybe <laughs> yeah. when you would get drunk, you would want these. Other- yeah, so like I would drink and then it would kind of like trigger other things like, oh, drinking's fun, but it'd be even more fun if I did this. Right. Yeah. You know, so like. And then I was like, you know what, bro, this is like, whatever. Like, I lived here for a little while, and then, like, you know, I would quit drinking for, like, a week. Roger would see me out. I'd just stop drinking for a week. Mm-hmm. And I'd ask her, let's go, let's go out, whatever. Sure. And I'd, I'd go out and, like, drink. But I wasn't, like, getting, like, super gnarly like I was. You know, I'd go out and drink. You were pretty and, good when you lived here. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I was skating more. We were, like, mm. skating a bunch and stuff. And so, like, I quit drinking the... It was October of 2013, so it's been like over five years. So wow! Wow! I have zero desire to drink nothing whatsoever. Yeah, it's just that you, you know just, what I mean. It's it's good if you did, like you said, you you it, it's fun when you're drinking, but it'd be funner, it'd be more fun with oh for sure <laughs> some special K or <laughs> something, it whatever yeah. it's called. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty gnarly. So five years, congrats, dude. It's amazing. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Keep that, it going. That Let's was right around going. the time you were filming your real street part, I remember, right? Yeah, so um I filmed I was filming my real street part in 2014 with Brzezinski. Mhm. Yeah, yeah, that's where we met and then we started skating and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, so Brzezinski was filming your real street part. Yeah, Roger filmed some of the clips too. Okay. And yeah. Brzezinski edited it and everything. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, that was cool. So yeah, that was like my first thing back into skateboarding since all that Stuff that Were you still to me. unreal in DC at this point, or was that no DC, um, no monster? It was basically no just monster. getting some real boards here and there. And what stuff. was the discussion? They with your board away. Yeah. yeah what was yeah. it? What, what happened there? So Mickey, Mickey called me. Mickey. I forget what year it was, but it was pretty much around the time where I was like partying and drinking. Right. And Mickey basically like cut my pay. He's like, "Oh, we're not gonna be able to pay," which I was understandable. Yeah. I wasn't doing. You weren't doing shit. shit you know. So I remember I was What's at the, I was, the special K though. Yeah, <laughs> true. <laughs> I was in the gym working out at the time and um, he called me and he's like, oh yeah, we're going to have to cut your pay. And I was like, all right, cool. I was totally fine with that. I was okay. cool. And then just kept working out and I was like, whatever. Right. right. And I was like, I'll figure it out. You know, yeah. like, that's just kind of how it went when I was still drinking, partying, doing drugs and stuff. And even my brother was like, bro, what are you like? What are you going to do? And I'm like, I don't know. I'll figure, figure it, out, it out. You know, yeah. and it's just like, went years and years of just like getting in trouble and just like going nowhere with my life and I'm just like bro like I need to do something yeah, you know so totally. I was just like so quitting all that shit was like <laughs> it, it seriously changed the world for sure me, I bet mm-hmm. and did they say at one point in time say like you know what we gotta take your board away we're gonna do all this yeah well pretty much my board was already taken it away. was already taken it away. was like pretty much gone gotcha you know? so I was like whatever but at that point I didn't care didn't because care. it was like whatever there's nothing I can do yeah. about it you know yeah. I didn't well. have cl- clips stacked and I could just be oh yeah, here's some footage you know right. so it was just like I kind of took it as it is alright cool and just still didn't know what I was going to do with my life so I was just kind of working out and just like that's pretty much it I would skate here and there and then um, yeah film clips with my friends here and there post on Instagram and mm. Yeah, wow. it's just like whatever. Let's talk about the strength training more. You know, you got into it after the whole drugs, boozing, kind of losing your sponsors. You really went for the the strength training. Mm-hmm. You know, 
Now, was that more of a, because you said you have an addictive personality, Mm -hmm. you know? So when you got into it, you really, you really went into it. Yeah. 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 But why not go back into skating? Why not? Like, what was the allure of the weight, of the strength training versus getting back on the board? Well, the strength training was more fun for me. It was, was it really? Well, it was just like to go from where I was in skateboarding Mm -hmm. to try to get back to that level and start over again. It was just like a bigger hill to climb, bro. I was skating for fun. And when I would skate for fun, Mm -hmm. it was like fun, but like strength training and all that, like I was having fun progressing in the gym, you know, every single seeing results, a workout, you know, like I would be increasing reps or I'd be adding weight to the bar. So over time, you know, you see the progression. So it's like, Oh, I was only say squatting 315. Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, I got up to 320 and then, 330 you know so like those little strength progressions it's like learning a trick in skating yeah, you know it, it's just like i just got really into it really addicted to it and then okay. just even seeing like your body change too sure. you know like that's like very motivating as well and then when somebody else sees you they're like oh wow like you're in great shape yeah, you, you know that's good. even yeah. more motivating to keep on going you got right. a good butt you know yeah they all love it they all love it I knew Rob was going to say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't not. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. We're all jealous here. I got a great ass, Raj. I just wear baggy clothes. So You say so. <laughs> no, but I can imagine it becoming, a, when you're seeing the results. Mm-hmm. My problem is, is I, I can't get into it that much. You know, I got the pull-up bar, and I, I, just, I can do four. I'm not yeah. just really seeing any results from doing four you pull-ups. Make it to ten, bro. Oh my god, consistency's bro. key. I know, but it's such a fucking. I asshole. imagine you like related to like built in cars. Yeah, well, I mean, because like you were really into like tricking out your eye rock, and it's just like, all right, how am I gonna make my body? Yeah, better? yeah. <laughs> I like building things pretty yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yeah. When after, because I, I know it takes a while when you first get into it, right? It doesn't it take a while to see the results. I mean, you're going in the gym, you're doing this stuff. It, it's not overnight. Well, right? when you, you first start, that's where you can make the most gains very quickly, really, very rapidly, because it's it's a new stimulus to your body. So you're able to build muscle faster. You're able to burn fat more optimally. Really, when you start training longer, you know, I've been training for how many years now? Like eight years nine years eight okay. years but it's like the gains are going to be much slower and then say for like dieting or cutting like it's basically one or the other so it's going gotcha. to take some time oh. but for like a newbie they yeah. can just start working out and start like putting on muscle and then getting leaner like improving their body composition obviously if like you have a good diet and the diet's everything too stuff. right yeah, i mean you can't important. it's very important yeah you can't so if i start working out i gotta cut down on the digernos and stuff <laughs> that's not really uh yeah. it's not really the best diet no papa john's no pa- yeah i can't <laughs> maybe once a week for a cheat day once a w- if you're good okay i'm a newbie <laughs> right like i said I, I i am stronger than i look but <laughs> if i started if you if we went to the gym right you were my trainer right you said, okay, do this, do the little lifts and the squats and whatever. Your ass is nice, but it could be better. How, how long would you think it would take me to actually see a result, upper body, and what do I have to eat to go along with that? One week, maybe. Let's talk about one week. First week, what are we doing? First week? First week. What well, are we first doing? week, I would have you doing all main compound movements because with a main compound movement you're getting the best bang for your buck like the squat the bench press the deadlift the overhead press the chin up okay um the dip so all these movements are activating a lot of muscle tissue at once gotcha post you standing and just doing a bicep curl that's not really doing i mean it's doing something but not as much as like say a barbell curl could do oh holding a barbell so you're doing two at once okay you know what i mean so like the squat that's like a mass builder like the deadlift it's a mass builder because it's basically a full body movement okay so you're basically in there stimulating muscle protein synthesis and so post work it doesn't have to be exactly post workout but within like you know a 12 hour period 12 hour window of training you know should at least get in like a solid meal of like having some protein because chicken yeah protein anything like that like beef eggs um even like some protein powders if you want oh yeah but like 
you know, your diet should be based around whole foods. You know, my diet's mainly like red meat. You know, I'll eat chicken here and there. Mm. Um, I like whole eggs, you know, potatoes, rice, oats, you know, some protein powder in it, um, some dairy, or even like, you know, some days I'll get flexible. I'll have some like Greek yogurt with like some rice cakes as like a treat. Special but, like, treat. <laughs> wow. yeah. um, some Greek <laughs> yogurt today, boys. Bomb, rice cakes. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> now, how much of my, how much weight do you got on? I, 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 you listen, you know, what do we, <laughs> it depends. 40 pounds. What it do we, it really depends. You know, you I mean, just, just looking at me. What? How much weight do you think you would put on that dumbbell? That I would barbell, start whatever. with the bar. <laughs> the bar. The bar. I could alone, do more than the bar. The bar alone is forty-five pounds. Oh, it's, but it's all about the reps, though, right? If I'm just doing the bar, forty-five pounds. I, I if I could do if I could do like twenty of them. <laughs> I don't know. Like I'm, that, wait, I'm lifting weights. <laughs> if I could do like twenty, uh, that, the reps is where it comes in right well it depends you know if, if you're using something that's super light and you're just doing 50 reps like sure. it's just you're not really doing no? much okay you know you want to be challenging your body so anywhere from anything is a challenge for this guy yeah <laughs> it's true <laughs> so pretty much you know anywhere from like the one to 15 rep range you can kind of train in so like okay obviously the lower the reps the more like strength and power you're kind of focusing on and then like they say the hypertrophy rep range which is like building muscle rep range is anywhere from like 8 to 12 but you know if you're training in the lower rep range you can still build muscle sure. optimally because okay. you're challenging your body as long as like you're eating enough calories to sp support muscle growth and you're right. sleeping enough you're recovering you know so all these factors come into play gotcha huh okay so the first week you'd have me do a bunch of stuff um <laughs> i think i graduate from the bar a bunch of stuff to you know maybe some 20 pounders on either side maybe you probably go from the bar to probably like five pounders on each side or two and a half. So, you know, you want to start two lower. Two and a half, Nick. That's still progression. First week, Not bro. in the first week. I This thing after a few weeks, okay. you'll be up to the 20s. You know what I mean? There you go. So you want to start lower so that way you can steadily progress instead of failing. You know, oh, I can do the bar. Then you slap on 20s on each side. You fail. fail. And then it's like it's... I'm just like all right defeats now purpose you know what i mean yeah. so if you're steadily progressing every single week it's motivating totally, yeah. to keep on going like, okay. oh, i can't wait to hit you know say 30s on each side or something right. or 45s you know okay. you get up to 135 but it's like that little progression weekly is like what keeps me driven you know gaining extra rep or gaining uh just adding a little more weight you know over time it's like it just keeps on going you know okay as long as like you know nutrition's in check sure. sleep proper training Pop, right sleep how much, um, how many calories do I got to eat during the day? That really depends. Does it? It does. Yeah. Every individual is different. You, you have to f kind of f figure it out for yourself. It's there's no manual, no, right? I mean, I mean, there's a manual, but you, you have to figure it out for your own body. It is basically a science, you yeah. know, but every individual is different in terms of their activity level. And okay. you know what I mean? Say if like, you know, you're a mailman or something, yeah. you know, your activity level is going to be so high. So you're going to need more calories on top of, um, your activity for the walking that you're doing sure. on top of like the training that you're burning more calories. Okay. So you know what I mean? Your, your, your caloric intake is going to be a lot higher than like say an office worker. Yeah. yeah of know? course. Uh, They're right. not doing anything. They're just sitting down all day. Yeah. So they don't need as many calories. Mm. How many calories you you take in a day? Uh, daily, it's about thirty two hundred. That doesn't seem like a lot. But I do have a cheat day once per week, okay. which is anywhere from eight to ten thousand calories. Dude, yeah, that must be fun. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so fun. Watches YouTube. Now, mm. how are you? How are you? Like, how do you know what calorie? How what has what calorie? You're, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't look at a donut and be like, oh, this is four thousand calories. I'm gonna, like, That's how do you a know? Donut. Well, well, it, like, you know what I mean. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Once you get into like the lifestyle and you start learning about calories, you can start eyeballing because you know you should have a scale at home, and so you start weighing your food and you're like, oh, that kind of looks oh. like that's similar to like six ounces of chicken. I weighed at home, so if you oh. can go out to restaurants and eat, you can kind of like Gauge. pretty much eyeball it, and then you can learn about macronutrients, which are like fats, carbs, and protein. Oh, okay. That's what calories are made up of. And huh. That's what's all in food. So pretty much like. I can have a full cheat day and kind of just eyeball things and just kind of guesstimate and get pretty close. Pretty close. Be pretty accurate. So. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Wow. Well, as Raj just mentioned too, like you have a YouTube channel, right? 
Now you started this YouTube channel when? 2015. 2015. And you were posting skate stuff on there, you know, just regular skate stuff too, right? This was, you were, this was kind of mainly like full days of eating, like working out stuff. Oh, really? Because I started watching YouTube when I was like, getting into lifting and stuff. So I was watching other, other YouTubers, you know, seeing what they eat and like right. seeing like the workouts they do and just like mm -hmm. basically learning from YouTube and seeing people do like intermittent fasting and different eating protocols. I'm, yeah. like, right, I'm just gonna, I wanna do this too. Yeah. You know, so I filmed like a video, put it on YouTube and then I just got hooked. I did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's fun. It's hard. It's a lot of work. You it film is. all of them yourself. You edit them yourself and you put them out. How many, like once a week? I do two videos per week right now. Two videos a week. Yeah. Okay. And the interesting thing is you said you had like in the beginning of the, in, in one year, you went from like 9,000 subscribers to like over a hundred thousand. Yes. That's incredible. That's, yeah. you, we're still trying to hit a hundred K. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but you said you, when you, you start doing cheat days. <laughs> <laughs> well, you Maybe said you should. started in 2015. It took you three years to get to nine K. Yeah. So I, I started in 2015 and to go from basically zero to 9,000 subscribers, it took mm -hmm. me three years. Three years. And then one year you And then hit. you started posting the, the cheat day videos and doing all that stuff and your, your shit just skyrocketed. Yeah, I pretty much just had more fun yeah. and it just grew. Crazy. Yeah, it's unreal. That's amazing. You get to eat and people get stoked. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a win-win, man. How do you, what do you decide to like what you want to eat? Do you just like, oh, I'll eat anything today. I don't I, give a Literally, fuck. I can eat whatever I want. Cinnabon? And like. But no. you think, but, but for the video though, don't you want to make it a little, so you're going to go a little bit overboard maybe. You're going to be like, oh, I'm going to go out and get these fancy donuts and the thing. It's. I mean, it'd be kind of, if you're just eating Lucky Charms. <laughs> people love it. Really? <laughs> yeah. Do you take requests? Yeah, for sure, yeah. Like, yeah. people have requests. Oh, can you go here and eat this? Or can you go there and eat this? Can you do really? a full day of fast food? Can you do a Good cereal? Why do people want to watch... I'm going to start my own. <laughs> Dude, you really should. I'm going to start my own shit. Every, every day's a cheat you day. You can plug it here, bro, and they'll subscribe. Yeah. It's called Everybody Eats. Everybody yeah. Eats. There you go. No, there's already an Instagrammer <laughs> named that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. never mind. I don't Everybody, know. But he feeds animals. Oh. <laughs> but um, that's in... That, Seriously, congratulations. That, that's an, an amazing Thank feat. Yeah. 100,000 people in a Thank year. You guys. We've been going for three years, and we're still trying to hit that 100K mark. That's faster than what I did in three years. No, <laughs> but you li you literally... You skyrocketed. Skyrocketed. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying from when I started yeah. three years in, right. I got to 9K. Because YouTube's kind of a science, right? There's a lot of people out there. They kind of do the same things. And, you know, it's like to gain that type of following, you know, it's 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 very hard. You gotta be likable. Know? Now, are you, are you kind of figuring it out as you go along like you know what people like this or i'm getting more views here and i've got to like are you just slowly figure are you just kind of going and doing what other people are doing and are you just like how, what was the process you see what i'm saying so it pretty much what really helped skyrocket my channel was doing cheat days cheat so days. like i wanted to do a cheat day and i'm like all right i'm gonna do a cheat day yeah. so ended up filming a cheat day with one of my homies that has like a, a larger uh, channel than me. Like okay. He does a lot of food related videos and stuff. My friend Nate Figs, Nathan mm. Figueroa. So we're like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll film a cheat day. So went down to Florida. Like he lives in Fort Lauderdale. Flew mm -hmm. down there, filmed the cheat day together. And I just like went out, ate whatever I wanted. And I was like, bro, this is so much fun. Okay. <laughs> this is like amazing. Now you're filming yourself doing the whole thing? Yeah. yeah. And so like with me, like I'm very consistent with my diet. So sure. all week, like, you know, I eat a pretty balanced, clean, type diet okay so then like just to have this one day per week where i'm like bro this is this is epic you know so filmed the video edited it put it live and then like the views just went up comments were up subscribers were coming in i'm just like where is this this is how is this happening you is know, he like, po is he posting your channel too is he helping yeah draw, so like, drive people there yeah we did basically do like a collab together yeah. but it was crazy that like they just kept coming in so obviously when you collab with somebody it'll it'll bring it'll in some traction yeah but even after that i kept doing like the cheat days and stuff mm. and like subscribers just kept coming in like because i guess it kind of went into like an algorithm of like cheat days or sure. something which people are just searching for all over the crazy. world you know so i was like you know what? i'm just gonna 
do one of these every weekend. You know, it's helping my channel grow and I love to eat whatever <laughs> sure. I want. Sure. You know? So it was just super fun. And then I just rode with it. And what I found that really works is just to be real, be yourself yeah. and just like actually enjoy what you're doing. Exactly. Yeah. You know, because right. there's a lot of people out there that are trying to make these videos and they're just kind of like faking it, but you can just kind of see you it. Can tell. You know, it's yeah. like, for me, I truly enjoy like having a full day of just eating what I want. Like I love donuts. I love pizza. I love burgers. I love Indian food, Mediterranean food, Korean, like, seriously, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever I want, like yeah. I can just eat. And it's like fun. And it, you said it's a lot of you. How long does it take you? You film it in a day and then it takes you a few days to edit it. And cause they're like 30 minute videos or something, right? Yeah. They're, they're typically anywhere from like 30 to 50 on the higher end, okay. you know, depending on what happened, how if there's more ate. people in it, right. yeah, how much I ate. Um, but yeah, I try to like make it pretty enjoyable. Sure, so that yeah. there's nothing that's kind of dragging. There's always like something, something going on, you know, right. like I'll either bring the music up or cut it or fast forward or mm -hmm. close up to a big bite or something. Just keeps them interested sure. to where they're yeah. just like, uh, like I want to eat that. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? yeah. So sounds like, like food porn of some it sort. Basically, oh, is, you know. But what's so other than loving food in it, whatever? But like, is there a point to having a cheat day? Well, pretty much, like so many people out there just want to have a cheat day. They want to be able to eat junk food because sure. you know yeah. so many people are so strict and restricted on their diet, gotcha. or they're just like. They're just scared to have like a donut or like to go out with their friends. Oh, I can't go out because like I'm dieting or like I yeah, can't eat those yeah. types of foods. I'll get fat. Mm -hmm. So what I do is like not only am I just going out and having a cheat day and enjoying myself, like I'm putting a message out there that it's okay to do once in a while and that one donut isn't going to make you fat and that right. you can have a good relationship with food, you there know, because like I get like people that DM me or like email me or just even the comments just about like how I've helped them with their eating disorder or I've helped them in some type of way when I'm just kind of showing them what I'm doing in my yeah. life. And oh, it's amazing. It's motivating you're strict for like six days. Well, it's not that I'm strict. It's like, I enjoy my diet, you know? Yeah. So like a lot of people like will be severely strict, like six days out of the week just to get to that cheat day. Mm -hmm. So like, like, uh, like, Straight. But for you, it's normal. You're just doing your thing, though. But you are looking forward to the cheat day. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I totally enjoy it. But I have, like, a good balance and relationship with food. Right. In terms of, like, you know, like, I'm not at, like, a super low body fat to where, like, I'm shredded to the socks. You right. know, like, I'm definitely lean, but I'm at a composition that I can maintain. And I'm not, like, ravenously hungry. Sure. Because when you're at, like, a super low body fat percentage, all you think about is food. You know, you're oh. thinking about your next meal and you're just like oh my God, you're looking at the clock, whatever right. eating protocol you have, but like all you want to do is eat, you know, mm. and that develops eating disorders and bad relationships with, yeah. bad relationships with food. Totally. Like, is there any food that you won't eat? I've pretty much eaten everything. I mean, I don't eat bugs, but <laughs> <laughs> there's like some weird stuff that on, people eat. Good. Yeah. Mm. I've heard they are, protein. but I haven't eaten bugs yet. Damn. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Um, Do it in your next uh, cheat day. All right, man. Oh, I'll, I'll try to find some. Yeah. Like, that'll go viral. <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Shit little bugs. Yeah. They, they do have like cricket ice cream. Yeah. Yeah. What? Go to Salt and Straw, they have it. Why would that, why would I want to get that? It's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad, it's good. So with the YouTube, now, are you, are you making a living doing this now? Well, it's part of what I do now. So like, obviously I'm not skateboarding full time anymore. Sure. I'm making an income from skateboarding. Do you train people? So yeah, I do that? Okay. online training and nutrition coaching. So online? I coach people from my computer wherever really? I go. So it's pretty cool that I Now what if that. somebody's got to subscribe to that or how do they, how does this work? It basically works. Um, you know, they'll, a they'll website just apply or on my website. So okay. go to my website send me a client inquiry mm -hmm. and basically have their information, age, name, um, what is your goal? You know, just get some information about them. And then from there, like, you know, I'll, I'll reply to them with like my coaching rates and like what they're interested in to oh. kind of find out like fat loss or gain muscle or body recomposition or gain strength or whatever. Mm. And then from there, if they want to sign up, they'll sign up and then I'll send them like, a pretty big questionnaire to get more information to basically I can create the best protocol and best plan that would suit their goals and needs. Really? Yeah. Wow. Now, do you have to be certified for all this stuff? Or yeah, how does this, I am certified. You, you, yeah. how, does, how do you get certified? What is this? How do you... Well, you can take courses online. I actually got certified 
around the time I was filming for my real street part. Oh, really? So I was like, I had it on my computer. Yeah, you were studying like, like crazy. Yeah, oh, wow. I was studying. Yeah. And I was doing all my tests online and okay. stuff. So, yeah. So if I signed up for your program, I'd have to, what kind of questions are you like? Pretty much I don't know. figuring about your life, your lifestyle. Yeah. Do you currently work out? Okay. What's your nutrition like? How do you, how much do you sleep? You know, right. how dedicated are you to changing your life and starting a new protocol? And then, you know, pretty much from there, like I'll create something that I think is that seems like a lot of suitable. work. How do you keep these people a, on track while yeah? Only I mean, it's kind online. of up to them. You're, yeah. kind of, you're kind of giving them the outline of like, hey, this is what you should be doing. But that's important because a lot of people have no idea no, at exactly. all what to do. Yeah. yeah. So well, if I'm huge. if I'm googling something, I'm I don't I'm going to get twenty five thousand different results of what I should be. Probably twenty five million. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It's like what There's I don't know. So what, much stuff out there. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So basically, I'll lay out a protocol and program for them to follow. Um, I'll basically set up a whole entire diet workout plan and then an entire spreadsheet with like a full data log with the date, their weight. Um, so they have like a checklist every day pretty much. Yeah. So they have to like work on their checklist and then once per week, they, well, they can reach out to me at any point during sure. the week if they okay. need to, but I have mandatory check-ins every Monday. So they get to send me photos, um, report how their week went. Did they hit all the cardio? Did they hit all of their training sessions? How was their diet? How was their sleep? So basically a, a full, how many clients do you have? Uh, right now I have 14. I was about oh, to sign up before dude, I had to send him photos and stuff. <laughs> I seriously, I want to sign up, be. dude. I seriously want to sign up for this, dude. Let's go, bro. We talked about it before a little yeah. bit. Yeah, but. Okay, can you give us a, a group? Raj, you want to sign up? <laughs> I always think it'd be kind of funny if like we didn't exper uh, Let's do a a transformation, experience. Let's do transformation, bro. Yeah. Dude, we try it in transform me in 30 days. Transform me in 30 days? No, me. Oh, you. Oh, I've got to do, do it too, though. No, wait, listen. Do they, do they have to... What about drinking and stuff? Do they have to stop drinking? I mean, that's kind of on them. If they are dedicated to make the change, I mean, they can drink if they want to, if they fit it into their nutrition goals, but I don't recommend it. You don't recommend you know it, I mean? yeah. I do have it on the meal plan, like, oh, like say, a beer or six ounces of wine is okay. like X amount of calories. If they were to have a night where they had a drink with their friends or whatever, but I'm not advocating for them to go get smashed. Sure. In the weekend. Sure. But uh, cause alcohol definitely dehydrates your body too. Oh, for sure. And so. it like decreases muscle protein synthesis. All right. Will you give us a discounted nine club rate? If we all, s I mean, that's I got three you more. Guys. Yeah. I got you all, yeah. Let's do this. Let's do this, dude. <laughs> you got, are you going to give us a discount code for the website? Is that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I feel like we need to like, <clears throat> document it and be Raj always wants to document stuff yeah. can't we can I just do it for my own personal well-being Raj alright go for it bro you can be inspiration for somebody yeah dude Chris I'm gonna buff dude every, buff Chris buff Chris buff crub buff crub dude <laughs> listen I, I don't want to get buff yep. I just want to be healthy little upper body little upper body I could use a couple pounds in the upper body yeah. legs are good legs no you, you need some more legs too I do need some more you gotta train legs I feel like skateboarders legs are usually pretty that's what I'm saying squats everybody loves glutes I know <laughs> I can tell you uh, got glutes I got a pretty nice ass <laughs> but listen so you gotta you give us a discounted uh, you give us a three listen I, all I'm saying is that, that sounds to me like a full time job what you're doing. Even if you have how many clients, 14 or something, it's work. it sounds like a lot of fucking work, man. Are they hitting you up a bunch during like, not the Monday, but through the week? It depends. Yeah. You know, if it's like a complete newbie, they don't know anything. You know, some clients come to me and they have like pretty much an idea of how to track calories or mm -hmm. they kind of already work out. But some people come to me with that don't know anything. Do you have any skateboarders that are, that are on this? No, no skaters. If we were, let's say we did a plan, like could you incorporate skateboarding into the, the, the whole workout? the whole workout thing? That's your cardio. Yeah. 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 But what about goes, sitting in the chair, sitting in a chair, talking to people? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that again ties into like the activity level. Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> How many times Chris moves the microphone? It's like, yeah, you it know. does his cardio right now. Yeah. Let's yeah. <laughs> 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 sit here do. for a couple hours. <laughs> <Yeah>. I, <laughs> gotta move the fucking mic, you know? Easy, Raj. Those are expensive. I'm working out over here. Those are expensive. Listen, bro, this is, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll sign up. How about that? Let's do this, man. Yeah. Um, Chris, Chris, seriously, we, we seriously need to do this. I have a feeling that Chris always like, yeah, dude, we'll do it for sure, but let's do it. I, I My diet's not that, I, 
like I said, I DiGiorno. <laughs> I go out a lot. To, I pick up food. Are you still do Blue Apron? Oh, I used to do Blue Apron. I used to cook. I don't do that anymore. It's too hot. Cooking is a whole thing, bro. Does cooking have to be on there? Can Can you just say go to Chipotle and get a burrito? I mean, you could. <laughs> well, you just got to know what you're taking in. I used to have an app. <laughs> <laughs> it was cool. This app would be a, you would you would tell the app, hey, I'm this many pounds. I want to gain weight. I want to lose weight. I want this and that and the other. And it'll give you, it'll say, okay, you need to get how many ever, you need to eat this many calories a day, right? You need, it tracks your, you know, your, with your phone, tracks your movements, your workouts, everything. I forget what it wanted me to do. And you could, um, like my kombucha, I could. Is it called my fitness pal? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I use that one. You do? Mm-hmm. Okay. So I could screen, I could, I could take <laughs> a photo, a scan the barcode of the kombucha and it'll be like. Easy. Easy, right? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, dude, this, do you know how I, I couldn't even get up to the amount of calories that it wanted me to, I was like, this is almost impossible. Like, I feel like I was eating a lot of food. Yeah. I would you get like, a, I would get yeah. like a milkshake. Skinny as fuck. I, would, I know I'd get a milkshake from like Pono Burger and I type in the, it has all the restaurants and everything. And I'd yeah. be like milkshake. I'd be like, dude, I still need like 1500 calories for the day. <laughs> yeah. That's why you have goals and stuff. You know what I mean? You have to like hit a specific calorie goal each day to support a lot of work changing your body. You yeah. know what I mean? Your body needs that fuel to recover and grow. Are you doing like a lot of meal prepping for, during this whole if I if we signed up is like a meal prep type thing. So what I do is basically design the whole plan program. You know, in the questionnaire, I ask them what foods they like to eat, what foods they dislike, and so I'll design the entire plan with a meal plan based upon the foods that they like to eat already. Mm-hmm. So they just need to learn how to weigh the food, cook it, and then also in the basically the inter- introduction email, I'll tell them that they need to download that app called My Fitness, My Fitness Pal, Pal. Yeah. and start uh-huh. using the app along with the meal plan, but everything's there, they just need to follow the meal plan along with getting familiar with the app. So it's like, I don't want them to be stuck on this meal plan for the rest of their lives. That's basically just a guideline. Mm-hmm. So from there, as they're learning to use the app, they're gonna be able to use like different foods to fit into their nutrition goals. You know what I mean? So they'll fit like, into their fat macronutrient, their carb macronutrient, and then their protein macronutrient. So like say if they, instead of wanting like chicken for instance and rice, they could have like say the Greek yogurt with like rice cakes. So they can get a little more flexible once they start using the app and understanding the basics of nutrition. Oh, you know? okay. Hmm. Yeah, it yeah. makes it kind of fun. You yeah. can fit different things into your diet and be like, oh, I can still eat this while still hitting my goals, you know? Crazy, dude. Yeah. Chris, you looking up your calorie stuff? <laughs> yeah, I, I can't, I, I don't know my password. <laughs> <laughs> You can't get my password. <laughs> Larry the cat. Yeah. Okay, we'll we'll try the meal. We'll try. We'll we'll we'll, we'll try it. You know. All right. Who here do you think will last the longest? Definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> you pointing to Kelly. What about you? Think so? He, I reached, mean, he reached out to me. Yeah, yeah but yeah. the thing. I've done stuff like that but before. But listen, though. he had. So have I. I have the app. <laughs> <laughs> oh, At least I've taken downloading an app, dude. <laughs> I've like lost a bunch of weight and like been f- like not like him, but you know, I've downloaded an app too, Chris. Tinder yeah. doesn't count, Kelly. Oh, nice one. It's Bumble. <laughs> <laughs> That's his workout for the week. <laughs> okay, so you say Kelly will last the longest. I, I am going to prove you wrong. I think I'll last the longest. I think Kelly will lie actually on his uh, questionnaire. <laughs> what? Yeah. Why would I lie, dude? Well, there's also checking photos every week. That's so. what he's going to lie about. How am I gonna lie about that? This guy's gonna Photoshop though. <laughs> Listen, when I send you these photos, you can't share them with anybody. I need to they sign. They stay private. They stay, they stay private. Stay, yeah. If those get out, dude. Are they wearing without my shirt? Are the shirts they stay, like they stay private? Are the photos like uh, shirtless dudes and? Yeah. So it's basically three photos, like uh, front relaxed, okay. side relaxed, and then back relaxed, just to basically see their physique and see where we're starting. I can't share that with you. That's it's, it's highly. Send a drawing. It's high, Yeah, I'll send you. I'll send you a drawing. <laughs> this is kind of what I look like. Yeah. Stick figure. I think I gained a little bit of size this week. <laughs> I'm going to be sending him photos. He's just going to be laughing at me, bro. Can we you all draw, start somewhere? I know. Can you draw the farmer's tan in there? I'll draw the farmer's tan <laughs> okay, and there everything. You there you go. Have you ever got any like funny photos? I mean, just the pretty typical ones. Yeah. But I mean, I have people that are really overweight, and then oh, yeah. some people that are really skinny 
See, that's the problem is when I was looking for this app to download, most of it was when I was Googling it, most of it was how to lose weight. It's a lot of it. It's all fat loss. N- like none of it was like how to gain weight. Like there's people out there like me that want to gain weight. And it's, there's not a lot of stuff out there. Start working out, bro. I, I'm going to go home and do four pull-ups. Four and a half, bro. Four, four and a half? Go. You, are, you can already do four. Oh, my God. Well, that was like a month ago. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably back to three. I'd probably be. Listen, dude. Are you going we, this way? Are you going this way? I do it, I do it facing me. It's easy. Chin ups. Yeah, chin, chin, up. chin ups. Yeah. Um, anything else we want to add before we uh, wrap this up, bro? Anything else you want to? talk about or anything i mean i guess like what i'm doing now i mean we did talk about like yeah youtube workout stuff but modeling like that's basically oh my, yeah yeah that's, that's right my you do career now yeah so so modeling so you got the you got the you the, saw the cover of a brookstone massage product what were you what, <laughs> what was this yeah so i shot with this company called brookstone magazine yeah. so it's basically like a a neck massager it just okay. kind of goes on you kind of hold on and there's like different settings and stuff so mm. i'm sitting there like like this is kind of smiling and like I'm on the, the cover of the box. There's really? Like stores worldwide. And no stuff, so yeah. way. Yeah, if I go into Brookstone, cool. I'm going to see your face on a You'll box. No <laughs> way. Yeah. How did you get into all that? Uh, so this was, I think, 2017 when I started getting into modeling. So, mm-hmm. you know, people are like, oh, you should definitely do modeling. Give it oh. a try. And I'm just like, yeah, whatever, you know. Yeah. And so then I was like, all right, I guess I'll give it a try so i ended up you get a lot of people being like you should model yeah yeah so like really? i remember like a lot of my friends wives were like nick should be a model <laughs> <laughs> yeah. do a lot of your friends wives say it about me rush no not at all no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's if we start real. training yeah. there we go you start making people we could be we could be on a brookstone you. uh Let's cover it, together <laughs> brookstone bros <laughs> 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 but yeah so pretty much i submitted myself to a agency okay. in Boston. Wow. And so I went up there to give them my photos and then mm-hmm. they're like, oh, come back at 4 p.m. So left and then I ended up going back and I had a meeting with Casey, which is the owner of Maggie Agency in Boston. Hmm. And so he's like, oh, so why do you want to be a model? And I was like, oh, well, just everybody. Look just, at me. People. <laughs> <laughs> fucking great. <laughs> so, so pretty much like I told him, you know, everybody is telling me, oh, you should try out modeling right. and this and that. And, you know, I told him that I have years of experience around cameras with skateboarding, Skating, photos, and sure. videography stuff. And so we just talked for a while and I was like, okay, cool. Like, we'd, we'd love to work with you. So I was like, all right, wow. awesome. And so then, like, I got my first job, which was for um, Honeywell. So Honeywell is like a lot of different products with like glass, safety glasses. Sure. They tools. do heaters and stuff. Yeah all, yeah. all kinds of stuff. So that was like my very first shoot. And then. Okay. From there, like I did a shoot with Brookstone and then ended up getting on like the cover of that box. Right, right. And then I did another shoot with Brookstone, which I ended up on like the cover of like their Brookstone catalog magazine. No way, wow. So that was really cool. And then I shot stuff with Under Armour, mm. um, JBL Audio, and it's just been pretty cool. And then just recently I just signed with Wilhelmina Model. So they're like- They're big. The big wow. main agency. So now how does that work though? Honeywell wants to, mod- do, you, do you have to go for an audition or do they just look at your shots and be like, that's a guy, bring him in, let's do this. Yeah. So there's many different ways. So there's like castings or there's like basically direct booking. Oh, so like oh, I don't, okay. I was going to castings when I was in Boston. Sure. But um, like they're just, it's not a guarantee. Yeah, so it's yeah, like yeah. show up to this casting, could be there for a few hours and then, you know, leave. And then there's callbacks and it's mm-hmm. like, bro, I don't, have, I don't have time for that. Right. So like for anything that ends up being direct booking, like, oh, we want him for this shoot. Wow. So like they'll reach out to me. Are you available for this? If I'm available, yep. All right, cool. Set it up. Damn. And then just show up and it's basically like hurry up and wait. Seems like <laughs> a know? lot of pressure. It's a lot of work, but it's pretty easy, you know, for some of the stuff, you know, sometimes it's like a full entire day of just like kind of sitting around yeah. waiting to set up different scenes. They get it set up, show up on set. You're on there for like six minutes. All right, right we're right. all done. Sit down. Or I'd always just bring my computer and work and edit in between. Sure. So I basically work all day and then be on set for like maybe 35 minutes total for the day. That's you know, so it's pretty crazy. crazy yeah. I feel like I'd show up and they'd be like, mm, this is not the guy that we, <laughs> we, we, we wanted. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we need to let's get rid of him. We need, some, back we need somebody else, man. Yeah. That's awesome though. That's really fucking sick. So yeah, you got man. the, you got the, uh, the YouTube stuff going on. I'm sure you monetize it. Get a nice little, uh, 
um, the, the misconception about YouTube, I think, is that people just think that you you get all this money and you're yeah. killing it, and it yeah. ain't. You could, yeah, you could, but it ain't that. Mm -hmm. It's listen. It can be a nice little, you know, money in the pocket, but it ain't buying you a house yet, right? No. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll talk after the show. I'll t we'll tell you how much we make on YouTube. You could tell us how much you Perfect. make, huh? See. He's making more than us for sure. You think? Fuck yeah. Mm. How many videos do you have? Maybe over four hundred. Shut the. fuck you have over 400 videos. Good check. What's like the most viewed video you have? Do you have over a million on one? Uh, it's almost there. I think it's at oh. over 700. Okay, so you got the strength training, personal helper, personal trainer. Training and nutrition coaching. <laughs> training and nutrition coaching. Yeah. You got YouTube. You got modeling. Those are pretty three good little revenue streams, bro. Is that yeah. all you're doing? That's pretty much, pretty much it. And just skating, skateboard again. skating for fun. Skating for there. fun. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you went to Tampa Pro to skate and oh, yeah. you got hurt? Yeah, I sprained my ankle the day of the contest, like an oh. hour and a half before my runs. Wow. It was crazy. That's... I couldn't believe it. Like, even like back down on my training to allow for like recovery and I was skating more and I felt great. And yeah. I was like, bro, this is awesome. You know, oh. like I was warming up, like kind of putting a line together and stuff. And I was just really stoked to skate because. It had been so long, you know, mm. people are like asking, oh, can you still skate with like all that muscle and stuff? I'm like, yeah, I can still <laughs> sure, skate fine. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. just don't skate as much because I'm busy, you know what I mean? Between the YouTube stuff, sure. clients, model stuff. So um, I was really excited to skate the contest, but I'll definitely be there next year. Next for year, sure. yeah. yeah. I'm not missing another Tampa Pro. So you basically, you, you tried to kickflip up the stairs and like almost sat, pretty much sat on your ankle. Yeah, like yeah. sat back on it and like my knee bent inward and it just Oof. like was a really weird sprain. Oh, Jeez. yeah. God. Are still, you still feeling it now? Or are you? Yeah, uh, so it's been a little over three weeks. Three weeks. So it is okay. still a little, a little tender, tender, but mm. it's probably one of the worst ones I've done. Yeah. I posted like the regular rolls, you know, sure. like the normal way you roll it, but it was like a inward kind like, of oh, yeah so damn bad. and i was going like mach 10 you were like, yeah did you get checked fast. out i did go get x-rays just to see if anything was broken yeah you got yeah. to they said it was fine and then they wanted to give me like pain stuff and i was like i'm good bro yeah yeah it'll just lead to special k for real special <laughs> <laughs> yeah. down well, the hole dude I, i'm stoked for you man yeah, you, thanks, i mean man. you you went from you know this killer skater to you know the, the depression the drugs and got out of that now you're doing fucking well man i love Thanks, it man Thank you. Killing. yeah killing it i'm having fun and now we're gonna sign up me raj and kelly Let's we're gonna go. see who you think kelly's gonna fucking stick it out the longest <laughs> Let's we'll go, see dude. we'll see it. he thinks he's a dude I'm, a, I'm gonna go run by the beach I do. You know, it's like, every night. I do. I run by the beach all the time. Yeah. But, but, bro, you don't. <laughs> what? He has a gym I membership, do, Chris. Too. Huh? He has a gym membership as well. And I Did go you there. He has I, more than a pull up bar, bro. Yeah. yeah. I do he, probably yeah, he more will than four. Crush us for sure. No, but I want to see. It's not about crushing, <laughs> <laughs> it's about the person who lasts the longest, who stays around in the. He, he will do it. You know how I want to see you do it, to be honest? I want to see Roger win. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, like I really. I, I need a buddy. For yeah. It. And hey, dude, I'll down the roll. And obviously, Nick. You don't even invite Raj skating, let alone to the gym. You, you don't. I, I go skate by myself lately. You can't take Raj with you. I don't want to skate with Raj. You what? Skate. <laughs> <laughs> so you bring your dad on session. No. no oh I'm fuck! He's, he's gonna be little, sitting there rub bricking the curb. Oh, wait, oh, yeah, he's he skates the curbs, and I don't really like skating the curbs. Yeah, so I got you. Yeah. So anyway, sorry, but my flat. I'm not gonna go to the gym with you, Raj. That'd be fun. Let's do it. All right. Listen, it's not about going to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? It's not. It's just, it's about the, the lifestyle and the eating right and right. Like I said, I'm not trying to get buff. But you need to put I need about, a little bit of muscle. Listen, five. What, what kind of workout can he do on his couch? Yeah. <laughs> Not much. But what is your? What would be your goal, Chris? Just to gain weight? This is going to be the answers to your questionnaires, though. <laughs> yeah, we're, I'm just telling you right now. When are you moving to California? Definitely by the end of this year. Definitely by the end of the year. I think so. Okay. Oh, wow. a lot of opportunities out here. There's just a lot more going yeah. on here. Yeah. We should do the photos and have it on the experience. Oh gosh, that would be gnarly. I can't. That would be gnarly. Nobody wants to see what's underneath the <laughs> shirt, man. Dude. Yes, they do. No, they don't. <laughs> yes, they do. I'm sorry to say. <laughs> under your shirt, yes. Not under mine. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking pitiful under my shirt. Before, after. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, man, like listen. carrot top. Dude, I know. He, he, that dude got buff. First step is to start. Absolutely. Yeah. Without starting, we'll never finish. 
<laughs> Words of wisdom. Listen, from <laughs> Kelly. Dude, thank you so much for coming. This has been fun, man. Dude, absolutely. I've enjoyed yeah. hanging out. And it's I'm, always a good time with Nick. I know. Yeah, I'm always. so excited. Like I said, I haven't seen him in like six years, dude. So this is awesome. Yeah, and when you move down here, let's kick it more. Let's, let's go. It, let's go to the gym. We'll go to the gym. We'll train. We'll eat. I'll, Skate. Do Don't Skate. worry. When yeah. we go to the gym, I'll walk like ten paces behind you. So you, so I'm, it doesn't look like we're together. <laughs> no, bro. <laughs> People are gonna, gonna you're, be like that, dude. No, nah. nah, bro. I got yeah, you. you're probably embarrassing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. I'm embarrassing <laughs> to go with to the gym. <laughs> no, no. Well, listen. As much as we joke around, we'll, we'll sign up. We'll have fun with it. We'll try it out. Raj is gonna. Get off of it first. <laughs> what? Then Kelly yeah, right. and then I myself. Think so. I think Roger will get really psyched on it, to be you honest. You think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need it. Yeah. You do. Yeah. It, it'd be interesting. I've been wanting to do. What about the whiskey, Raj? What about it? It's my cheat day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, this has been fun, dude. Yeah, thank too you. much fun. Dude, we, yeah, dude. Maybe we could thank sit you here guys, for another man. hour, yeah. bro. Can we give you some nine club stuff to take back home? Please. Yeah. yeah like please. a mug, XL shirt or L lodge. Kelly will grab you some please. stuff. And um, yeah, this is going to be interesting. I'd love to, because listen, I've always, I'm lazy. That's a problem. True story. I'm lazy. So trying to, when I was younger skating every day, you know, you'd eat a lot more when you're out and about and doing stuff, you know, you just, you're, you just eat more. You skate, you eat. Listen, man, I'll fill it out on my questionnaires. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be waiting for it. No, it's just hard, you know? It's just hard. I, like you said, it, coming up with a new routine. It's just getting into it it's and staying consistent. Yeah. Consistency is very, very key. Where did I hear something about like, it, it literally takes like 60 to 90 days to actually form a new routine. I thought it was I, like I think 21 I, days. Is it 21 days? Is that what they said? I don't know. I think you're just going to do it. Don't don't it's try to fall out of routine too. Yeah. It's so easy, dude. Yeah. I look at that pull-up bar every day. What if I want to do like Pilates or yoga? That doesn't really challenge the body to build muscle. I don't want to build muscle. You just want to get leaner. Mm, I look, mean, you could do that. Well, good naked. <laughs> <laughs> Resistance train. Yeah. Strength train. Do you have a problem when you look in the mirror, Raj? <laughs> like, God damn, I look better in eighteen. Listen, bro. You be. You still wear beanies? I haven't in years. Here's a black yeah. beanie for you. Thank you. you. If Thank not, you. give it to one of your buddies, you know? Who, Absolutely. You know, like, here's a nine club uh, switch flip, switch Manny. Damn. Some stickers you could put on your uh, barbells. <laughs> <laughs> on the kettlebell? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, bro. Uh, I got you some workout great. shirts, you know? Uh, large shirt bro, for you. Thank you, guys. And a large... It's a regular t-shirt. Regular tee. Yeah. Hell yeah. There you go. Thank you guys so hey, much. Nick Dompier, dude. Bro, it's this been has been it's an been, amazing. Yeah. Good times as always. Glad to and be here. And you know what? We will give updates on the experience. I don't know if I'll show my photo, but oh my gosh, <laughs> <laughs> we need to do that. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be like pretty embarrassed to be honest, but uh, I'll do it. I fucking don't It'll care. It'll keep you accountable, bro. Yeah. yeah. So what about the legs? Do yeah. I have to do? Or am I posing in my boxers? Boxers. Or, seriously. What if yeah. you don't wear boxers? <laughs> Just, just commando. <laughs> hey, we're we're learning a lot about Raj <laughs> this episode. We're, we're learning a lot. I, about, I literally only have one pair of boxes. Yeah, I don't wear boxes. Are you Seriously? serious? Yeah. Yeah. You, you free ball every day. This whole time, always. Oh my god. Why do you have one Same pair here. though? I don't know. Like you just ha like do you even have like you just, just a special occasions? <laughs> it's just, it's that one day yeah. a week. He's like this is box this is, day. Yeah. This is boxer day. <laughs> for, the, for the day I plan on being in a car accident. <laughs> Jeez. Dude, good luck with everything in the future, bro. Yeah, this thank is, you. I, I love uh, your story and the, and the path you're on. It's great. Thank you, guys. Oh, hell I can yeah, only dude. dream to be on the same path. Maybe one day. It's good to see you happy, dude. Yeah. yeah hell thank yeah, you, dude. Yeah, it's, Seriously. It's great. Yeah, and good, dude, hey, good luck with the YouTube channel. Yeah, Let's talk you. after the show, because I'm fascinated with the YouTube world. For sure, I'd like yeah. to know what you're doing and how what, what we're doing. It's, it's super interesting, you Absolutely, know? Absolutely, yeah. Because I think a lot of people... You know, even skaters, they should have their own YouTube channel. Absolutely. You know, they could post whatever they want. They don't have to go vlog. They don't have to do this, that, and the other. They can just put whatever they want on there. It's their own yeah. TV show. Everybody's got these Insta clips they're putting out. They're crazy. They're just, like, there are dudes out there that have like hundreds of thousands of followers yeah. on Instagram. Yeah. They could have that on like YouTube and monetize it. And monetize it. Mm -hmm. you, if you get in, you know, 40, 50,000 views on a video, then you, you can make a couple bucks on that on yeah. YouTube. You Can't know, do that on Instagram. Yeah. 
again dude thank you so dude, much thank bro. you guys you're the man yeah. and um let us know when you move out here for sure we'll i'll be it. back for yeah. sure Let's go skate it. work Absolutely, out yeah you want your old room back yeah <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean Rod? oh that's right you're in there <laughs> <laughs>